internet. This is the Combat Jack Show, and I am Combat Jack. What's up, A King? And I'm A King. First and foremost, internets, we have children in the studio this evening. This is probably the most kid friendly <laughs> ever episode of the Combat Jack Show that we've ever recorded. We got uh, Mr. Menas, daughter in hand. We have our current mm. guests. Yeah. Daughter in here. We got we got all these little girls, these you know, black girls rock. Um l- you you have some announcements to make before we introduce introduce our guests? Uh yeah, uh, May nineteenth. May make 19th. sure you uh check out the Instagram and Twitter, social media is a combat jack show, uh, you know, uh combat's personal uh social media and uh look That's for the- Reggie Ose at uh IG. Yes, yes. And um we're doing a live show on the ATL May nineteenth. You know, the RSVP link is out there. You know, pull up. Uh, we don't have a. Uh, we can't confirm our guest. We can't. Yet? We can't announce the guest yet. Okay. But we have very strong leads. Okay. But we will make some announcements soon. Okay. Via social media. Via social media. But uh, pull up, Atlanta. What up? Pull up. Hey, ATL. What's up? Wait, it's in Atlanta. It's in Atlanta. Yes. I'm a- going to be in Atlanta and on the 19th. Yes. Yay! Gotta pull up. I got to pull up. Maybe maybe she had the calls for us. You, you, you got to come through. I'd be more than happy. Yeah. L- is that the music room? We got the music room. Yeah, is that the music. The music room? I like yes, the music room. The music room is dope. You yes. know what I mean. So yes. um, yeah, stay tuned. Internet. Um, I also want to thank you for your um, just overwhelming support of our um spinoff show. Mogul, the life and death of Chris Lighty, which is uh, exclusively on Spotify. Um, by the time this comes out, we're still on episode three, about to drop episode four. It's a, it's an amazing story. It's engaging. It's the story of uh, Chris Lighty, which coincides with the story of hip hop, man. Like like you know him coming up in the Bronx and 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 him doing such amazing things. Like I have a problem though with some of you n words. I'm I'm saying n words because we have, we have children in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, I get hit like every day, at least ten times. 20 times on social media yo combat it's on spotify i don't know what to do i gotta listen n words download spotify you don't have to pay don't give them your credit card you don't have to do that it's for free man just yep. register with spotify and support us man like i i, I think i i spoiled y'all over the past seven years like you got everything easy on on on, on itunes and and soundcloud and everything y'all can't download spotify to hear like the greatest piece of work that I've ever been involved with throughout my years as combat jack. Y'all can't do that. Like, listen, after this episode, if you, if you listen to this episode, I don't want to hear anything about you. Download the mother and listen to it. And to our international supporters, international will, supporters, y'all, y'all are asked out. I'm we, sorry. Until June 16th. June 16th is on every place uh, available on every platform. Well, and it's available on every platform internationally on June 16th. Right. What is that, King? Got it. Right? Am yeah. I right? Yeah, you're okay. right. You're right. Okay. Listen, um, I love this woman, man. Like, like, like she's so engaging. Um, so just so engaging. Like just her perspective always, you know, fills me with it, with a new perspective. Um, and she ain't no punk either, man. She does not back down and she challenges what needs to be challenged. She's been on the show before and this is her, this is her return appearance. Let's welcome to the Combat Jack show, Ms. Jamila Lemieux. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. How are you. you? I am very good. How are you? I'm so happy to be back. I'm 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 good. I'm good. And 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 I brought somebody. What's your name? Naima, don't get don't, don't get, get shy. Don't now. get radio shy right now. She she's upset because something's not happening with her tablet. With so. her tablet? So okay. you- all right. So, just name it. Just no. Okay, she don't want to be. I'm upset because you turned on a book that I didn't want to. Here. I you apologize. talk that talk, girl. I... You talk that talk. <laughs> you see right. You, see? you talk that talk. She Combat Jack honest. shows for the children. Jamila, how you doing? I'm good. What's up with you? Launched a new site. You got, wait, 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 wait. The last time you were here, you were working at. I was at Ebony. At Ebony, and we talked about how you were like so thrilled. Yes. Um, to carry the torch. Yes. From one of your mentors. Yes, yes. Uh, a Kierna Mayo. Kierna Mayo. And then to represent such a strong brand. Yes. As Ebony. Yes. Time has passed. Like, what's happened? Well, uh, I I was very honored to work with Kierna at Ebony for about five years. Yes. And she made a decision um, last summer to leave the company. Uh, She got a call from Interactive One, which is part of the uh, Radio One Inc., now known as Urban One Inc. family of companies. So Radio One, TV One, Interactive One is the website part. Um, Global Grind, Hello Beautiful, News One. 
And, you know, at first she kind of was like, yeah, you know, I'm good. I'm better in chief at Ebony. I'm not really job hunting. And they were very aggressive about trying to get her in. So she comes and she she has a set of interviews. She comes back to the Ebony office and she closes the door and she's like, look. I'm telling the story about Auntie Kierna, okay? Okay. Oh, she's on, Naima's on Spotify. I just want you to know. What? For the people who could not download Spotify to listen to Reggie's Naima, podcast. Naima, are you listening to Mogul? She's, she's listening to New Edition. <laughs> okay. But she did pull up Spotify okay. when you said it. I, I see. <laughs> so, 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 so you niggas out here, man. There's no, there's no, and she's four years old. Y'all have no excuse. So anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jamila. Yeah. So, um, you know, she, she calls me in her office and she closes the door and she says, Look, I'm going to take this offer if they make it. And I think you should come with me. We are going to get the opportunity to do the sort of work we always wanted to do here. They have the resources. I think they believe in my vision. And if you want to stay, I'll support that. Right. If you want to come, you, you got a table. You have a desk waiting for you. And so she, she says this to you. And, and what's your instant uh, response internally? Like, do you want to stay? You're like... Yo, yo, Ken, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know what? It, it Is it so stable, right? It's safe. It was all of the above, you know? It, it was, like, again, we talk, We were coming up on our fifth anniversary. Right. Right? And, um, you know, in my mind, she was editor-in-chief. I was maybe the next one after the next one, right? So right. somebody, you know, she'll move on. Someone will step into that role. Or if she stays around three, four, or five more years, right. I'll probably be the one right after her, right. right? And so I'm good. I'll get my book deal while I'm here. I'm just uncomfortable. I like the work. You know, we had a lot of issues, though, right? We had issues paying freelancers, of course. Um, which was trending on Twitter a couple weeks ago. Which, 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 which Ebony that, which, O's. Was the hashtag hashtag Ebony O's? Hashtag Ebony O's. You know that was very painful. Yes. Um, and, and because the people who were there when it happened couldn't speak publicly on, well, they can speak publicly on it now, but they couldn't speak publicly on it. Um, and and you know I didn't say anything, but I felt really bad because I knew what it was like right. to owe writers a lot of money and not have anything that you could do about it. Right. right. Um, because of bureaucracy, because they didn't want to pay, because they wanted that money. Is it like you know, uh, net 60, net 90? If I had to do it, stuff for people have said net 90, and I don't net understand that. Net 90 is wild, right? But wow. they, we, we were telling people 90, net 45, I want to okay. say. I want to say. I, right. I'm not entirely, you know, I don't remember. But I want to say it was 30 or 45 days, and, and people weren't getting uh, getting paid in that time period. So, I, honestly, I can't tell you why, right. you know. Um, but it hurt. But it hurt, right? And Do you I, want and some I, whiskey, by the way? I could use some whiskey. Okay, yes, this it's, it's is. Have you ever had monkey shoulder? I have not. Monkey shoulder is a. Oh, actually, this is not monkey I was shoulder. It's, say, it's bullet. I was wondering why you were asking about monkey. <laughs> monkey shoulder is amazing, but we'll we'll do with this fine bullet yes, bourbon. Say when. Work. Okay, Jesus that's Christ. That's good. I, my head was down with me looking, so that's good. I was going to ask the baby. Brother Chris, can somebody <laughs> pass this to. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. King, are you drinking a little bit? Not that much, though. You could get half of that. Yes. Uh, by the way, <laughs> Internet's King is a teetotaler. <laughs> what, 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 what's that? First hip hop reference to teetotaler. Google it, man. Um, lightweight? We're not, we're not, we're not, we're gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna explain that, what you're saying. You're officially a teetotaler. Oh, so anyway, so okay, so, yeah, so, 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 the, so there was that, right? Yes. And the company had, cheers. 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 The company had its challenges, yes. you know, and, and, but they'd also recently been purchased. So I was like, okay, we're supposed to get this influx of cash. Maybe things will get better. Do I wait this out and see what the new owners have, you know, in mind? Right. Also, when new leadership comes in, they also, I'm thinking, are they going to get rid of all of us? They have an right? agenda. They have an agenda. So I really didn't know what was to come. What I did know for sure was that I trust Karen Mayo. Yes. That I think of her as one of the just... Beacons, just beacons of like of of hip hop journalism, of of hip hop womanist journalism, of just her ability, like what she did with those covers, and I think she had thirteen total. Oh my god, she it, she she uh, brought a lot of life. Just the you know Ebony. the plus size girl cover and, and yes. Harry Belafonte, the, Jesse the, the Williams, the Cosby Day, show, the Cosby cover, right? Like it, she's just a visionary and. You know, ultimately, I wrestled with the decision for, I think I had about a month before I ended up getting off for myself. Right. Okay. And I and I, I went with what I knew. Right. And what I could trust. Which was your instinct and your gut? Which was my instinct, my gut, and our history. Right. You know, and so I, I loved Ebony. I'm very proud of everything we did there. Salute um, to Ebony, by the way. Yeah. But you got to pay your people, though. I mean, at yeah. the end of the day, man, yeah. black businesses, are, you know, this is not an indictment to y'all, but I understand, mm. you know, I've worked at black-owned publications. Yes. <laughs> and I know very well 
yeah. how it feels not to get paid. Yeah. And for, it feels for, for your for your work. And it feels worse when it's your people. Because yes. I'll say I've written for both and I've had good experiences and bad experiences with both. Of course. Right. But but when it's somebody who looks like you, you do have this feeling like you're supposed to take care of me. You're supposed like to Like you know. understand the hardship that we go through. Absolutely. Right. So, you know, I mean Ebony, also, I, I know if I was ever unsure that I made the right decision, two things happened this week. One, we launched our new site, which I'll tell you about in a second. Two, Ebony fired everybody today. Huh. Wow. Blood, they blo- bloodbath. All the, from the editor in chief on down. Damn. Every, pretty much ev- every editor that I worked with there is gone. So, you know. That's got to hurt. I, I don't that's like. Also got to feel good that, that you preserve yourself. I knew I made the right decision right. for myself and my family. Right. So, you know, I, I, I can't take any pleasure in it. There are people that I really cared about. And, you know, even the ones I didn't know very well, I, you, you don't want to see 13 black folks on the street looking for a job in a business like this. Right. So, in, in this age. Yeah. In, in your president's America. In your president's America. No, in your president's no, America. Your, I don't no, have a president. <laughs> I'm stateless. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us about the site. Yes. Yeah, so CassiusLife.com. Ca- Cash, like, like Cassius Clay. Like Cassius Clay. Like the great, um, the yes, greatest, like, great. like Muhammad Ali. Absolutely. Inspired by, you know, his spirit. The okay. site is not about Muhammad Ali, but, and, and this was Kieran's brainchild again. The tagline is born unapologetic, right? Mm-hmm. So to get to a Muhammad Ali, you have to first have a Cassius Clay. Yes. You know, so he, obviously he grew, um, as a man when, when he embraced Islam, when he had his relationship with Malcolm X and, and when he became a father, but it was Cassius Clay was that seed, right? That became, that, that became this tree. And, you know, I, I, I hope that we are, if but a humble seed in this black media space, right? From which we can grow writers and content creators and video, uh, you know, video producers and whatnot. I want other young people to get the experience that I got from Karen Mayo. So, you know, I, um, yeah, I should mention she's the senior vice president of programming for Interactive One. I'm the vice president of news and men's programming. Okay. So it was also nice wait, to. Wait, news and men's programming? News and men's programming. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Now, I have an issue. Feminist agenda. I have an issue with that. I have no, an no, issue but as, but a, no, but as a meninist. As a meninist? <laughs> no, so the, the original plan. Oh, excuse me. My, my daughter informed me that we're too loud on your show, sir. Um, I'm sorry. The original plan was when I came there, I was going to work on two sites. I was going to work on news1.com and we were going to create a black men's website. And so I would have staffed it, right? Right. This wasn't going to be me saying I am the editorial genius that decides what the men want to have. But I have always had this vision in my mind of an online or print destination for black men because you all don't have one in the way that we have Essence or Hello Beautiful or or even Madame Noir. There's no space. It's like that, that intersection between GQ and details and you know what girls get from those women's and magazines. We used to, I, I used to be, a, I used to be a magazine nut, mm-hmm. and I remember back in the day there were magazines. Yeah, I mean, I I, I can't remember the name. I, Ebony Man, which was not a good magazine. That was to not be a fair, good but magazine. But it was an attempt. Yes, right? and I remember some other. Was it Cold? Um, Flim Flam magazine. Yeah, they and were it was brief. Just, we, we've we've always had bad. Yeah. And you had King, to be we, fair. King, King but, but skewed King, male. But King was definitely a skewed male. Yeah. But it, it was it was that theme. Like I don't, you know, as uh, listen, I don't have an issue right with robust right and round right. beautiful women of color but the way that but i they, don't need to yeah. see that on every issue yeah and I I, don't, you know what i'm saying yeah and it's funny i i when king was popping and or i should say when it was in print shout out to daytuan shout out to bone Sue. yeah there were, i mean there were some amazing writers and thinkers that went came through that and even you know just my perspective now is being a more sophisticated feminist as opposed to how i was then right because right. i just remember just being so bothered by the image of the women that i couldn't get past that and right. so now i think i have a greater appreciation for cheesecake photography like you know the pictures were dope. I wish that that had not been the cover every month. Oh, the like, th- like the, 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 like the, the attracting theme. Yeah, right. you know, like again, they could have treated it like Beauty of the Week and Jet, right? So it's like you you got these got like let's see some breakfast on the cover, right? Men are interested in reading about men too, and you want to see the beautiful women. You go inside and you learn a little bit about who they are as people, which some of the stories did tell you. You know their interest in what they did. It wasn't just the pictures, but I I, I think somebody could probably revitalized that brand in a really smart way in 2017 if they pivoted away from because now you have Instagram yes so the, the which girl, is the new king which is the new, new which is the new beefcake without it's, the it's words a, like yeah. at least back then it's a new you, black tail 
It's the new Blacktail, yes. right? At least back then you, you got the titties. Are you old enough to remember I Blacktail? I remember Blacktail. Come on now. <laughs> you, but you back then you were getting the titties in the ass, but you were also getting, you know, how to buy a bottle of cognac. What's yes. the difference between a VS and a VSOP? How do you, I, I, you know, actually, buying a suit? I have to confess, I never got to those articles, articles with, because with Blacktail. Yeah, you got oh, well, black, not with a, Blacktail. I'm talking about King. Okay, I, yeah, yeah. I've never <laughs> read an issue of Blacktail. There's no I, reading in Blacktail. No, it's Shout out so to Blacktail. Oh, you know about Blacktail too? Yeah, I know about it. I didn't. I want to know who right in my mind. Say what? Risk, risk game strong? <laughs> nah, I wasn't doing all that. <laughs> <laughs> Internet's listen, risk game strong, all right? <laughs> in my right. mind, black tail is like black porn written by white men. Of course, of like, course. Like, I feel like was it's... It, was it white owned? Was black tail white owned? I think so. Like, I don't oh. think... That wasn't a Johnson publication. Right, that okay. wasn't one. <laughs> right. I don't think any black folks. I don't think. So yeah. I, I love the, I love the layout. I, you, Thank you. You just, you just showed me the, the layout to Cash's life. Yeah. I love the layout. I love some of the issues. I, I love like the, the the first the first category. The first Thank article you. that you have is what the f. Yes. Is Cash's. It's like, what the f. Is I like Cash's. the logo. Thank you. you know, it's it's very strong. It's very understated, and uh, and uh, the iconography. Thank you. Is is amazing. Thank you. We were we spent shout out to the entire Cash's team, the creative team, the video team. We spent months ideating and, and looking at different logos and color treatments, and you know, again, Karen I had her hand in every single piece. You know, like the C was a little bit too thin. Can we? You know, the A doesn't quite look like. I, I mean, it was a very slow and deliberate process in creating this site. And you know, we are. Um, it's not a men's site. So, so originally the plan was for me to do that, and then this idea to to do this site happened, right? And so, as opposed to me leading this men's site, I became part of the team that was leading Cassius. But, but let me ask you. Let me interrupt yeah. you. When I hear Cassius, mm -hmm. I immediately think of Cassius Clay. Right. Arguably, not even arguably, the greatest athlete of the 20th century, mm -hmm. right? Um, I would imagine that this skews towards men. What the, it, what, does. it does. It does. It does. And so, so two women leading. Well, no, no. So we're not the entire. They're there. Okay. And I mean, to be fair, the senior most editors are women, with the exception of one. But we do have, you know, well, technically we have two. There are two men in our senior leadership team. We Some have of our friends is now most of the fun. video team. Yeah, Corey. Uh, I mean, Corey most, Towns. Yes. Corey Towns Shout out is to in Corey. the building. Um, Corey's a good dude. Corey's Godzilla. a great guy. Zilla's on the team. Zilla's crazy. <laughs> He's Ray, crazy. Ray, Ray Holiday's on it. Too. Ray, Ray Holiday. There. Shout out to Ray. Yeah. So we um we have Darnell Moore who okay. came from Mike, brilliant journalist, scholar, theologian, just fascinating and and just black genius, black male, like genius leadership. We have uh, the team is about fifty fifty. Okay. You know, the head of video is a man, um, Gideon Moncrief. We have, um, it, it, we just have a really amazing, amazing lineup uh, of people, men and women, you know, mostly black and Afro Latina. Yeah. I'm sorry, Afro Latinx. Right. So Latinx is a new I, I didn't know that the X, I thought the X was silent. Listen, <laughs> I had listen. To ask one of my coworkers yet. I was so embarrassed. I was like, so. So, on top of the editorial, mm -hmm. tell us about the original content that you guys are dedicated to creating. Yes. So, we are doing monthly um, covers. Julian Mitchell. Uh, shout out to Julian. I, I would be totally remiss if I didn't mention him. Um, and Jada and Barbara and. Stephanie and I don't want anyone to hear this and not get a shout out. And everybody Bruce gets and a shout out. In the bullpen. Gets a shout out. Everybody okay. gets a shout out. Everybody, right? all cashes matters, right? How do you like? Um, are you enjoying your bullet? Oh, it's wonderful. Is I'm, it, I'm this is the most kid it. friendly it's, episode <laughs> of the Combat Jack. So enjoy your bullet. Yes. Um, but yeah, so we, you know, again, the tagline is born unapologetic. So we are seeking to be unapologetic in ways that we certainly weren't at Ebony. You right. know, we that you was have a, to apologize a little bit. A little bit. You know, it, like, it what are a, the things that you had to apologize about? Um, I had some internal apologies to make. I never publicly apologized for any things I was asked to publicly apologize right. for. But, you know, I, I, I have a mouth on me and I say things maybe on social media or it's not even so much about apologizing, just things that we would not say in places that we could not go. Right. And I kind of hate that. Like, I kind of hate I just I kind of hate in 2017. Yeah. Um, personally, and I'm not trying to make this about me. Combat Jack, like this Reggie O say, this elder statesman at the time, sometimes I have things to say. Yeah. And it, it, it ruminates through my mind, can I say this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without offending someone. And, and I, it depends on the it, it depends yeah. on the time of day and my yeah. mood and how much I've been drinking or not. Like 
F y'all or like, you know, no, I'm, I'm a hold back. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, context matters. Circumstances matter. You know, we're in an era where people get canceled for 140 characters. Yes. You know, I, I saw people want to cancel Harry Belafonte because he said something that they deem problematic. I'm like, wait, what, what could Harry Belafonte uh, said that was, was problematic? I don't even want to, I don't even want to dredge it back up. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But right. this is like, a, I use him as an example because right. if we're willing to, and again, this wasn't a massive, a mass of people. There were people who said it. If we're talking about an octogenarian, I'm sorry, now he's 90, right? 90. Somebody who has that many decades of service, of activism, of commitment, bravery of integrity, and courage. bravery and courage, Self- demonstrate selflessness. Selflessness. Yes. If, if he doesn't get, I'm not saying, and that doesn't mean he's not ca- capable of doing something or saying something really awful or offensive and that we have to just immediately forgive it in the moment. You can still sit with it. You can be bothered. You can address it. But there's a difference between I don't like what you said and I, or I disagree with you on this right. and you're canceled. And I feel like the beauty of the internet, right? The, 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 the democracy that the web has given us social means media, social media, black right? Twitter, black Twitter. We can respond to things. We can address, like imagine how that Pepsi campaign with Kendall Jenner would have played out 20 years hmm. ago, right? When, it, when, when the internet was very young. How would it have played 20 years ago? You know, it, people would have had to do an email letter writing campaign, right? You know, and, and, it and been subtle, the reaction subtle. And again, if it was on, if they released it on the internet first, there's a good chance. A lot of people wouldn't have seen it. Right. Cause you I know, wasn't cause on the internet. Not years everybody ago. was on the internet. We're talking about 1997. <laughs> I was making money. I didn't have no time. <laughs> have time. records. I had no time for no I had digital. To, what? I had to wait till my mom was done on the phone to log on to, to dial up with the, <laughs> the, the, the free hundred AOL CD. And <laughs> AOL we started, we had to, right. And we had any money. So we had Juno, we had the cheapest internet that possible you know and if we were out of hours maybe i didn't see the commercial right right and so there do i think there would have been an outrage sure you know but it would not have been as immediate like right. you know like them and massive and massive right and effective and effective and so i I'm, I'm grateful for that my career exists because of that but what i don't want us to do is to allow that to get us to a place where we abuse it and we see it abused right and like Black folks in particular and, and and black women, I think we're so used to being silenced. We're so used to being told our opinions and our thoughts are, are the least important of them all. And so now we've got this thing where we can clap back and, and, and be effective. And I just want us to, you don't always pull out the big guns, right? Sometimes you, you just need something You got to measure your battles. You got to measure your battles. Right. And so, again, we can, let's have dialogue. Let's hold people accountable. I went to a conference at Spelman College last weekend and Loretta Ross, brilliant feminist organizer and activist, yeah, said something that really Okay, baby. Said something that really stuck with me. She said, Are you calling people in because you think they're vital to the movement? Or are you calling them out to demonstrate how woke you are? Mm. So if working. I care about you, hold on, baby. Oh God, not working. Okay, That's internet. So I just Combat want you to know that the <laughs> name is uh, tablets not working. So I, I apologize. Okay. So, do you think this person has? Excuse me. Hey, Naima, we're recording something. Listen, parenting skills one on one. I contact. I contact. Please, I contact. Mommy, I know. Do you know? Do you know? Naima needs your Mena. And it's such a Mena. Yo, we need a kids podcast. We should yeah. let the kids come in and talk, talk, you wreck should. shop. Look, we're going to have Obama here at, <laughs> after year eight. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, do I think this person is, is valuable to what I'm trying to do or just a value man? You don't have to be a movement person, right? right? Are you somebody who belongs to my community and I respect you and I value you, which means I can say, look, Reggie, I fuck with you. You said something that really bothered me and I well, want to talk curse. to you about curse? it. She's, she's got the headphones okay, on, okay. so she's not really listening. You said something that really bothers me. I want to talk to you right, about it. I'm, right. I'm angry at you. I could be right. mad. I can even no, say, be mad at me. I'm not even a fan. So just don't think this is coming because I right. like, I don't like you, right? We can have that debate. Or I can perform, look how much smarter I am. Look how much more conscious I am. I'm more woke than you. Mm. And I'm not going to say, you know, I've done, I've had moments like that on yes. social media. And it's usually with people that I just think are so completely anti- just, just against anything I believe in anyway. It's like your low hanging fruit. But it also made me stop myself like, I don't even really need to do that. Like, unless somebody just says something awful, why am I performing? Look how woke I am. I mean, right. in my mind, I'm not thinking like, ooh, you I'm need, so and smart. You, and you've already proven yourself time it. and time and time after time. You don't need to prove yourself again. Thank Let me you. ask you something. You just said something that's really fascinating to me. You talked about how, you know, over, over the centuries, you know, women, particularly women of color, 
have become accustomed to having their voice silenced, having to be silent. And I'm seeing, I, I would say over the past four or five years, I've been amazed and just hypnotized, actually hypnotized and, and energized by the voice of women of color. You know, because these are voices that I've never really heard before. Mm. And it, it, if you look at my, if you look at my timeline, you notice that I, I, I tend to retweet more women. You do. I have noticed that. Because women, like, like y'all, it, it's an educational thing that, that's, mm. that's humbling and also exhilarating because when I hear women, really spit that fire with not necessarily venom, but there's a little yeah. venom in there and, 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 and shooting at patriarchy in a way that I've never seen. It's like, you know what? As somebody who, who detests white racist supremacy mm -hmm. and acknowledging yeah. the sexist in me, mm -hmm. if you can, if you can educate me and humble me and entertain me at the same time, I got your back. Like, like yeah. talk about the, that phenomena that is, black feminism right now yeah i mean it's i began and and so something you said you probably never thought about the fact that you hadn't heard those voices because you're not looking for them no i i, right? I realized like that at a certain point it, i was a sexist pig but and yeah. i'm still I'm, and i'm still i'm not saying i'm woke on that level of course but, but i'm aware of my sexist right tendencies and I think most of us have those tendencies, right? In the same way, white supremacy is not a race. It's a behavior, right? It's this, this school of thought. And we can buy, you know, we buy into it too. And women buy into a lot of really sexist ideas that, you know, that suppose the worst of us or, or that really kind of reduce us to being these very weak, uh, you know, just low ability, low importance people. I started calling myself a feminist when I was like 12 or 13, you know, wow. um, I had read a few, so I, I had the, and I, I wish I'd kept the journal. I had this journal where I wrote my first feminist essays. I remember one was called fix your own damn dinner. And I'd like cursed out, I'd crossed out damn, um, because I was afraid my mom would see it. And, and sure enough, put that, say that in the mic. Come on, say it in the mic. I want you saying that. Okay, so I, I'm not cursing anymore because yes. now she's listening. And I'm not going to curse either, okay. Naima. <laughs> I'm going to drink, though. I'm going to drink this brown, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I, I wrote this essay, Fix Your Own D-Word Dinner, which is interesting because my mom was single, so I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised that I was so bothered by the concept of a woman having to work and be, you know, cook, clean, do everything and right. because I saw that on television. And I guess also because she was single, I saw my mom literally doing everything. Um, and she wasn't bitter or cynical or, or mad about it at all. And my parents got along very, very well. Um, but I, but I just remember being like really bothered by that. And I wrote this essay about like Gladys Knight singing in this Kraft macaroni and cheese commercial. I'm like, this woman is Gladys Knight, and they got her singing for some damn Shilling blue box from, yeah, from, from macaroni yeah, and shit. Like, instant, come on. instant, instant, instant. Yeah. I was like, this is meal. what what black women are, are reduced to, right. you know. And so I was, you know, able to pick that up at, at that age. And I started reading some books. I discovered the nonfiction section of the library. And it was as if my world just opened. Like, I don't know why I hadn't thought about there being a nonfiction section of the library. But I did not realize that there was a section of books that were just all about black people and our lives and our history. And I remember reading Lisa Jones's Bulletproof Diva. Yes. Um, Maybe a year or two later, Joan Morgan's When Chicken Heads Come yes. Home to Roost came out. Which is the new out. release, new yes. edition. Yes. Shout, shout out to out, Joan Morgan. Shout out to Joan. And, and what an amazing privilege it is for me to know Joan. Yes. You know, and, and to be able to tell her how that book changed my life at, at that age. And she was really, for me, the confirmation. It's like, she's cool. She's in New York. She's a hip-hop girl. She, you know, she's somebody I want to be like when I grow up. She loves men. She, you know, because there was also that, too. I was like, well, I really like boys. And I'm really girl, you know, like I don't, I don't is, necessarily. Is, is there, is there this like this, this, this weight? Because this is, this is what I'm puzzled with, and mm -hmm. I'm, I don't mean to cut you off. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm cutting you off. Patriarchy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, no, it's, it's not. I'm, it's, 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 I'm it's, it's me. You're the host. This, this is the thing that I'm puzzled with. Like, like we're in certain issues where black women educate me. Mm -hmm. There's this backlash, particularly amongst black men. Mm -hmm. That 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 have the, that that posit that if you're this staunch black feminist, you hate black men, you all you only love women, mm -hmm. and or uh, or you love white men. Or That's you love the white other men. thing that they are trying to destroy or yes. emasculate yeah. this this progress or this this ideology 
what black masculinity is. Mm -hmm. What is that nerve that's because because when I when 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 I read Mm -hmm. like for example one of my my favorite um, Twitter accounts is bad underscore Dominicana Mm -hmm. and she goes hard. Yeah. yeah, she's one she of my goes, favorites too. She yeah. goes hard. Yeah, you Very. should have her on the show. I will. She goes hard yeah. against men of color. But when she goes hard, I don't take offense. It's mm-hmm. like, yo, this is enlightening. Right. Go. Yeah. And, I, and I, I retweet it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, her perspective talk- is, is, is right on. on it, because on the because, because it, cha- it, say- it challenges me to be like, yo, this makes, it doesn't even challenge me. It yeah. doesn't challenge me. It makes Sense. Yes. Can I shout out to Zahira? Yes. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yes. I, haven't, I haven't had the privilege of meeting her yet, but I followed her for many years and she's brilliant. And sometimes left of me, be, you know, I'm on the left and she's further left and, and she gets me in order. I read shit and I'm like, yeah, she's right. You know, she's right. And, and to hear you just knowing that I think I get a little bit, not a full pass, but some of the men that are not really into feminists give me a little bit of a pass right. because they've either just taken the time to listen to me. Yo, Internet, support of this episode of the Combat Jack Show is brought to you by the Spotify original podcast, Mogul, The Life and Death of Chris Lighty, hosted by me, a.k.a. Combat Jack Reggie Osei, co-founder of the Loudspeakers Network. Mogul tells the story of the music executive who changed hip-hop and shaped the careers of some of the most important and beloved artists of hip-hop, LL Cool J, Missy Elliott, 50 Cent, Nas, Diddy, and so much more. With one of the most illustrious careers in music, Chris Lighty rose to the pinnacle of musical success before an untimely end. This story is more than just music. It's the story of the American dream. Mogul, the life and death of Chris Lighty, is a Spotify original produced by Gimlet Media and the Loudspeakers Network. Stop fucking around, internet. Don't be afraid of Spotify. Download that shit. It's free. Follow and listen to Mogul every week exclusively on Spotify. We're so hyped that you guys are loving Mogul. Tell us what you think of the podcast by following and tweeting at Mogul on Twitter. And if you want to keep listening, check out the playlist inspired by the show available on Spotify. I'm a little drunky right now, but now back to the show. I would imagine that you're pretty pretty much more accessible. Uh, yes, exactly. Right. Like, so I've been in these mainstream spaces. I've been on this show and, and, you know, done things like this before. Um, but to hear you talk about her and I know you've had feminists on the show like that to me, that says a lot, you know, that you're willing to be held accountable. And that doesn't mean that everything we say, you're like, yes, queen, tell us queen. It's like, no, you might be like, mm, I don't agree with that. Or, I don't understand. That doesn't, that doesn't no, sit no, right with me. She's definitely said some things that I don't agree yeah. with. But th- and sometimes I've chosen. Not to necessarily yeah. debate her publicly, right? Yeah. But I still applaud her. Yep. Yeah. For, and 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 any woman that goes hard, like like my favorite Twitter account is is Genghis Kells. Mm, you know, yes, who's a member yes. of the of, of the of the LGBT, LGBT. Yes. community, yes. and it's like LGBTQ community, and she goes hard in her perspective as a black woman. Yeah, as a black queer woman, she's it's so funny. She's one of my favorite follows too. And at some point, I guess maybe she she unfollowed me, and like I like unfollowed by just in pettiness. And I saw, <laughs> but wait, listen. God, so I saw her. I, love, I saw just kind of like, oh well, I don't know Kels, what I did what to up, you. Yo, what up? Wait, so I saw her at your Christmas party, right. and I walked up to her and I was like, I don't know why you unfollowed me on Twitter. I've never said this to anybody before, but I really liked you. I like your thoughts. <laughs> you, I was hurt, and she was like, Yo, I didn't do that on purpose. Like it must have been an accident. I really like. <laughs> Oh, you too. So we refollowed each other. <laughs> and even if she was lying, that's fine. Because I really enjoyed her thoughts. And maybe I can't remember if I refollowed her on the spot or if I had just done it anyway. Right, right. But I just remember being like, you know, it, it's rare that there's somebody I'm really interested in their thoughts. And like, I see them unfollow me. Like, I don't really, you know. And it's fine. You don't have to. I tweet a lot. I can understand that when people who love me, they're probably like, enough. But, but once again, but she's, like, she's like, like going to the root of my question. Yeah. Like, how? what can I do? So what thing. can we do to, so that we break out? Right. So you, of this limitation, this 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 cage right. you of asked, patriarchy. So you and the, white offends so many of my brethren. So so why the the why does it offend you? There's there's a lot of reasons for that. I think in one, if you're oppressed out in the world, when you go to work, whether you're uh, you know somebody who works in this industry, if you're white collar, good job, white collar, want to have a good job someday, whether you're a student, if you're you know, a blue collar worker, you know, standing on the corner hustling, 
you know that on the basis of your identity as a black man that you're oppressed, yes. right? You're clear on that. And on some level, you're aware that just black people in general are oppressed. So we, as a community, have taken on this attitude that black men have it worse. And worse is subjective. And I don't think... It is subjective. And because, I, be, it, let me interrupt you. Mm -hmm. I have three sons right. and one daughter. Mm -hmm. The concerns I have with regard to my sons completely different yeah. and the, the concerns that I have with my daughter. The key word now is different. Different. And so I, I don't think it's appropriate for us to say who really has it worse, you know, because black I men are more likely to be harmed by police we're, violence. We're hunted. Right. To be, on one level. Right. You are hunted. And I think black women are treated as collateral damage, mm -hmm. you know, and it's we are more likely we over index in being the victims of police violence to far more than other women. When you talk about the school to prison pipeline, the way that the portrait of black girls doing really well in school has been painted in our community is just devoid of facts, right? So again, there are places where there are wins. Like we are more likely to be enrolled in college than other demographics. That does not mean that we don't over we over index in every single place that you can measure school discipline. So we're more likely to drop out of high school. We're more like than white women, white girls. We're more likely to be suspended at the preschool level, right? At, at every level of education, a black girl is more likely to have a police officer involved in something that she's done in school. In fact, if you look at the data that was used to substantiate the creation of My Brother's Keeper, hmm. it paints a portrait of black girls in school, black and Latino girls, that is very grim. It doesn't say, wow, you're all, you all are making straight A's and the boys are making F's. It's like they getting F's and you getting D's, right? And so the idea that we're just, the, the idea that black women are okay is just categorically untrue, right? And so let, let's just say like, okay, you, you have these places where, you know, maybe you're doing slightly better. We still, and we don't earn as much as you all. Like the idea that we're making all this money and y'all have none, that's not true, right? Where we get paid less than you all for the same jobs. But let's just say, okay, well, black women have made some gains in education in the workplace. They're fine. You all are not at danger. What do you mean you all? Black men. Us, me. You all are not at danger at our hands, in danger at our hands, in the way that we are in danger at the hands of our men. And when you say that, people think, oh, well, she's saying that all black women who black, get killed get killed is, by black, black men. Are the black, the black men are women. killing all the black women. How dare you? Most of the black women who get killed by another person get killed by a black man. That is a fact. It's a fact. Statistic. You know, in the same way that most white women who get killed by another person get killed by a white man. However, we have this very different relationship to you. One, it's more likely to happen to us than it is to happen to a white woman. Right. Number two. Why? Why? Because I, because of the whole oppression effect. I would say poverty, right? right. And oppression. And that you you know Lack of you options all, in there. You come and you, you take some, not most, some men, right, across racial lines, take their, their pain home. Right? This is what they I forgot the name for it. But when a, there's some and it's been proven, when your team loses, you're more likely to beat your wife. Right. I used, to joke so about, this, I used to joke about that. I used to right. joke about when whoever lost. Yeah, the that's, Super who, Bowl that's who goes the, home the, and beats the, the their championships. Wife, right? I'm like, somebody in Cleveland is about to get and some, some, some wife woman is about is to get her ass. Yeah, yeah. And that actually happens. And so if we take this outside of the, the context of a Knicks game or a Bulls game and we talk about life being the game that's kicking your that you're losing. When you come home, who do you take that out on? Right. Who in a patriarchal society? Who? Do black men have power over because they don't have it over white folks? But do black men really they have are. power over black women? If you are the person who can completely up and just destroy the trajectory of my day because I'm walking down the street, I'm on my way to work, and you standing on the corner and you say, Yo, baby, and I don't say nothing. And you say, Yo, baby, and I don't say nothing. You say, Fuck you, you fat, black, nappy headed bitch. That's the type of power. And it's not something that happens to you all. You know, black. And it's oppressive because it happens. And it's oppressive, all day, right? And we're talking day. about sexual violence. We're talking about domestic abuse. And, and we're just talking about this at times feeling a general sense of you don't matter as much as we do. 
right? And so people want to think of patriarchal power as like, are you the president or are you the subject? Are you the king or the subject? It's not that simple. You know, it's that if I send my daughter to school and she has on little shorts and a tank top, and there's concern that the boys are going to be distracted by it. The concern is the boys, right? It's not, let's teach our young men how to function with the girls in their class. It's, right. let's tell this little girl not to wear that to school. And I know that in the grand scheme of things, that's a very seemingly small issue, right? right. But it speaks to just the nature of, of our society. If you look at the instances of... Um, hey, hey, hey. Man, we got time to, we, can't, we can't do that here. If you look at how... We respond when there's a, a, an, a rape accusation involving a, or even a violence accusation without pictures uh, involving a black man and a black woman who's believed, right? It's not us, right? Or even if they believe he did it, there's this idea, we got to protect this black man. You know, by any means necessary, it's a black man trying to make, we got to protect him. What was she doing there anyway? If, if the example of R. Kelly being given almost carte blanche access to all these young women in the city of Chicago, allegedly. If that doesn't say to you that there's a power issue, and it's not just about celebrity, because we've got our Kellys and our families and our communities. It's the guy you know who, he he been out of high school 5, 10, 15 years, and, and he's still lurking around, hanging around, got him a little girlfriend, <laughs> you know, who, who works at Foot Locker, and, and he's 40, and she's 17, and nobody's saying anything about it. <sighs> you know, it, it's, it's just so hard to talk about. Right. Because... Knowing all this, I still have healthy relationships with black men, right? right? Like, I have like, a gr- like, 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 let's 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 be clear. Let's be to so the internet out here. You love black men. I love like I've never dated anyone but a black man. Right. Overwhelmingly, my experiences dating and otherwise with men have been pretty good. Right. Right. Like I get. I, but but I, you're painted as this 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 <sighs> individual that hates black men. I mean, how does that make you feel? That hurts. Right. You know, that hurts as much to me as the patriarchy because, again, it's like, well, we're addressing the issues between our men and our women or, or just our men and themselves in now, certain now, ways. Is her, is her headphones connected? No, because shout out to Apple for completely ruining. Oh, I, she doesn't that's have the jet. Seven. So, I mean, <laughs> shame on me for upgrading. No, that's okay. And that's, I have okay. The that's okay. That's okay. Um, but it hurts, right? It absolutely hurts. You know, it's just to, to have somebody lie about you to your face hurts. And I will say, this i think that some of the men who either the, the the big red flag issues when it comes to patriarchal violence if they don't apply to them or they don't feel that they apply to them and maybe they do they might feel that way too they feel like i'm lying about them to their faces and i'm always very clear and intentional in saying we know most of you don't beat your women we know most of you are not going to pull out a knife or a gun on a woman right but we know that we've had too many girls killed for not giving somebody their number right we've had too many almost every woman a girl you know teen girl i know is a a, a survivor of some sort of sexual really? violence almost if not, every yes and i mean and almost not, every i said sexual violence so not all you know classic when i think of rape i think of you know a stranger rape or a stranger rape or a date right. rape but some sort of sexual assault something physical Right, being somewhere and somebody grabbing you in a place that is just completely overtly sexual, inappropriate. completely inappropriate and uninvited. Disrespectful. Right, disrespectful. You know, I edited a story for one of our writers, Barbara Gonzalez, shout out to her, um, that we ran on the site this week. And she talked about, in it she mentions, and she's much younger than me, she's uh, 22. She mentions being 14, getting chased home in East Harlem by a, a car full of men. When she literally, they're, they're catcalling her and they chase her home. So she's running. If you thought maybe, okay, we drive and we're like, hey, shorty, hey, shorty. And let's just pretend you thought she was older, right? Which we know oftentimes they know exactly how young these girls are. Okay, you know, we, we try to get her attention. She says nothing. We can't keep it moving. It's bad enough you're approaching her from a car and there's a group of you. They follow this girl home. Luckily, she gets in the house. She runs upstairs. You know, she's panting and crying. Her mom says, why are you wearing a tight shirt? No. Oh. You know, I mean, and her father, you know, and she says over the years, her, her, both her parents reiterated that sort of messaging. You know, if something like that happens to you, it's your fault. We so ask, she internalizes it. She internalizes it. She talks about that, right? And like, and like how it, it, 
was hard for her to make peace with certain things that she was interested in and, and you know how it at a point where your identity is just developing right our young women are more likely than not to get that sort of messaging. You know, I mean, I've heard full grown women talk about fast tailed girls, you know, and, and and then when you listen to them talk, some of them are just simply repeating the sort of violence that was done against them. They were the fast tailed girl. They were the one in the tight shirt or the short skirt. And somebody said to them, why were you wearing that? And they felt like it was always their fault. Maybe if I tell you not to wear a tight shirt, I can save you from what happened to me. Um, you know, but I mean, as much as the actual acts hurt, the fact that you can say, look, the when backlash, we t- the backlash, from your you know, it, especially because when we talk about toxic masculinity, you know, which is not saying that to be a man is toxic, but that there's a way in which masculinity is performed that is violent, inappropriate and unreasonable. That's not just for us. There was that man, uh, forgive me for uh, blanking on his name, who killed an elderly man. Right. He he gets on Facebook Live. He says he's retaliating because his woman left him and he's going to kill people at random until, you know, he can't White kill boy. black guy, black, black guy. guy. Um, you know, he's going to do that. He goes, remember, you know, it was like three weeks ago. He gets on Facebook. There was a national, there's yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. manhunt for him. Chubby um, face ball dude. Yes. Um, and, you know, the first person he killed, the, the only person he kills, as far as we know, is this older black man. You know, and, and he's attributing this to the loss of his woman. Right. You know, so much so that while they were still looking for him, eventually the police caught him and killed him. The woman issues an apology. You know, she's, she's sorry. And again, I get it. Like, he, you know, at this, at this point, this man's still alive and, right. and he might be looking for her. Right. So I, I don't expect her to say anything other than what she may have felt would protect her and her loved ones. But I saw a man on social media saying, see what happens when you leave these, you know, a nice guy. And he called himself a good guy. No, 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 no. That, that's that's and, not and, acceptable. And again, that's a whole different level. Yeah. That, that's extreme. Yeah, right? and, 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 but there's, there's a lot of broken black men out here. Absolutely. That, that's what it comes down Absolutely. to. Absolutely. And a lot of broken black women, too. But when I think about, okay, he's so angry about this woman that he commits this act of violence. He didn't kill her. Right. He killed an old black man. It had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. And so it's just this violence. And he's there, too. This violence doesn't just harm us. In fact, when we look at the violence in our communities, yes, there are people that get killed because I had an issue with you it's long standing I was coming after you and then there's also like I'm just mad because you stepped on my shoes you disrespected my girl it's this, you, bubbly, you it's this it. bubbling sense of helplessness and yes. we look for somebody to take it out on yes now this this is another issue um, that I question I understand it when I was younger but now I necessarily don't understand it like this whole thing about a man's body count and a woman's body count like mm-hmm. like, like what what is what is this whole thing about like why are we so sensitive uh, why are we so in, so vested in what our women's prior body count it's, was? And that is patriarchy, right. right? This idea that you're supposed to not just own the woman who's with you, or you're not supposed to just own your woman while she's with you. You're supposed to somehow magically own her in the past, right. which means she wasn't out there doing much until she met you, you know, which I always thought was kind of funny. I'm like, okay, all right. How, what are you looking for from these encounters with this woman who's supposed to have only been with a handful of people? Do you want five, somebody? Five guys. Five, five guys. Five, like five is the magic, is five the magic <laughs> number? I hope not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, what was that meme? Did you see the, the, the young, the couple that broke, they, they broke up with each other and they, re, they did this video that went viral where they talked about their breakup. And yes. did you see that? The, the guy that, 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 that like, like, yeah. Herbe. So there's that meme of him where he's like, I don't know. I wasn't counting. That's me. I'm like, I don't know. I wasn't count- like, I honestly don't know because who cares? And this is you know, a new it, consciousness that we need as men. Yes, need absolutely. To, need to internalize. It's so, it's so unhealthy. You know, right. it's so silly that Chris Rock in, in one of his routines, his joke was, how many guys you been with? Two counting me. What's wrong with you? You know, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's stupid, right? The idea that a woman is spoiled or soiled somehow by, by being with other men. Now, nobody, I, I don't think any of us aspire to be with somebody who's been completely irresponsible yeah. in recent times, right? Like meaning recent enough that you don't know what you got and you ain't even taking care of yourself. And we're all supposed to be using protection, taking good care of ourselves, getting tested and being honest, right, with our partners. But just the idea that somebody is, is now she's no good because she's been with maybe half as many people but, you've been with. But does it affect ridiculous. women? Does it affect women if she's like, like I, I I'm totally curious. Yeah. If I say to somebody my body count is seven hundred, mm-hmm. does that bo- does that bother women? 
I mean, I would be like the the few times, and I I don't ask and I don't right. answer. Don't ask, right? don't tell. Like, don't ask, don't tell. Like, but if somebody but said if to somebody, you, if, if, if somebody it, said to you, Jamila, my my body count is seven hundred. How does that make you feel? I'd be like, whoa, <laughs> you know, I've and I, I probably like, laugh like, at like, babe, but you, you, I, you know, you, I probably do the math. You're the best, you're the best you're one, best but I, you, you know, know, the game is the game. I mean, that the game is the game. I mean, that that's a lot of people, right. you know, I, I think I'd be more interested in just the logistics, right? So like, how did you, if, if you're between, you know, wherever you are, your 20s, 30s and 40s that I'm dating you, how did you get to 700? I'd be just curious and like, do you work? Did you just tap out of school? Because that, that's a whole lot of people, you right. know. Well, wait, how old were you when you became that, active? That, so that would peak that would peak interest. It would like, peak like, some it, curiosity. curiosity right. And I, I think my bigger question would be like, who are you sleeping with right now? Right. You know, because you go through this period when you're dating somebody, like you're not nest you're not usually sexually uh monogamous when you first start sleeping with a new partner, unless right. it just so ha you know well, I should say it's very likely that they've been with somebody else recently or that you that they may be dating another person and you may be dating another person, right? Or, or have quite recently. So, you know, my question when we step into that, and oftentimes it's like, okay, I was sleeping with so-and-so and then I met him. Now I really like him, so I'm not dealing with so-and-so right. anymore. I'd be curious to know, like, how, you know, what what's your right now looking like? So if you've been with 700, are you prepared to be with one woman? You know, like, can you be monogamous? Have you been monogamous? At what point were you monogamous that you managed to rack up 700? Uh, past partners right. so you know but i just don't have any i don't care you know i, I care how you treat me right. i care about how he makes you feel how you make me feel do how I he feel responds like to you how you respond to me are, are you uh, what's wrong what's wrong okay well then how bad jack shows for the children oh, right she this is when she wants shout to out to out. odb and wu-tang <laughs> It's okay. Naima, you cannot. She's trying to watch Rick and Morty of all things. How are you? How? I can't. <laughs> anyway. So um, me, so, but yeah, so it, it's just all about how you treat right. me, honestly. I'm getting some thirst threat. Thirst. I mean, excuse the, the whiskey. I'm getting some thirst trap You're hungry? tweets. Okay. Like, yo. Uh-oh. You got Jamila. Uh-oh. She, she's are you sweet about being there? She's a, she's she's a dime. Aww. Like And cats are like, how can I get her attention? <laughs> Who can get your attention, Jamila? <laughs> uh, <laughs> usually, because young... you've been very vocal, yes, about you know what I'm saying like 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 dating and and, mm -hmm. be, and 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 owning it, like 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 who gets your attention to, uh, to, to, to the internet's out there that are listening. I want some water. <laughs> um, can you can you get my attention while whilst I parent? Um, whilst who usually I, whilst whilst I parent? Okay, so. I, I'm sorry. I, my boss was talking to me while I'm trying to do this silly okay. uh, podcast. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. So who? How do you get my attention? Um, I like really. I like guys that are smart and you know very smart. I mean, yes. people always say smart, but that that's a really big deal to me. And smart is subjective. Creative, smart, subjective, but smart to me. Um, and and creative and good looking. I, I typically um. Is there a height date? qualification? Because that that's been the main thing. <laughs> Does that really? That's um, been the main thing. The person I'm dating now is six feet exactly. I'm five nine, so um, you know he might actually be five eleven and a half, and that's fine. <laughs> but um, you know, internet, internet to, to come into the circle right now, you might be nice with your hands right now. <laughs> <laughs> he can fight too. He, no, he, he got waves. What kind of he hair? Right. He, no, he, he doesn't. He doesn't know. Locks. Braids. No. Um, he light has, skin did. Dark skin did. Uh, he's like. Mm, dark side of light maybe okay, okay. um i'd say brown skin uh it's got a little kinky kind of you know i don't really know how to describe it not a fro but it's not short either uh, he's a good looking guy um he's but younger do, but do you say uh, to the internet at this point even though you're dating somebody mm -hmm. shoot your shot um I will, are, are you past that right now because the last uh, time when you were here you were like shoot your shot i was yeah i am um, i'm not it's funny because i think the last time i was here i just started What's a fro? Really? <laughs> really? What's a, You tell me what a fro is. Yeah, we need okay, a children's Afro. podcast. You do. You really children. Don't give them no ideas. We got yeah. just talk. Just talk whatever. <laughs> but um, I no, I'm not. It's funny, right? So last time I did your podcast, I started dating. So I think I like met up with someone I just started dating right but, after I left. How'd I that work like, out? Hey, we had a nice run. We dated right. for a few months, and you know, it, it came to kind of a natural end. When do you know um, it's a natural end? 
when I'm not interested anymore. Right. When I just, that little thing, I'm just like, yeah, he's cool. You know, we're just kind of going through the motions at this point. And right. I feel like my last, you know, like the, I, I guess there's been like maybe two guys since um, I, I've been uh, single, I guess, for almost five years now. Uh, and, um, yeah, uh, I want to say the, the two that have been more significant just both came to a very natural, you know, no saltiness on anybody's end. Just kind of like, this was cool. Um, so, yeah, now, no, right now, it, I, I'm not really entertaining any, you know, shots. Any new prospects? Yeah, I just... I, Answer I, that, I, <laughs> don't, don't, don't creep up in the DMs. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, and I'm, busy, I'm a busy lady, so yes. it's, you know, it, it's nice to have somebody in my life that that's been awesome and yeah. you know i have my daughter my career keeps me very very busy um so uh, i'm not at the roster age anymore like right. uh, there was a time in my life where you got a, team, you got a, <laughs> a, a little team, a little but, team. But, but you know <laughs> right now i can't i'm like i'm old i, I got i can you entertain need an MVP. one you just need I an MVP. nice mvp yes <laughs> um so a lot of lots changed since you were last on the show mm -hmm. once again I, I said this earlier what's up with your president <laughs> How's that changed the whole playing Can't, field? Actually, I think this would be a really interesting time to bring Naeem into the conversation yes. because I have she can tell you what happened yesterday. So I'll, I'll give you some context. She was at my office. I worked very close to the studio, <laughs> and um, the president landed near there. Children are very afraid of this president. My come, nine come my here, nine year old told me two weeks ago. She's like, "Daddy, Trump invaded." Syria, and I was like, "How do you know this?" Because when I was nine, I didn't, I didn't know about Syria until I was like maybe thirty. Yeah, no, she, we, come here, she. So, we're talking about Donald Trump. What do you think about Donald Trump? He's mean. Okay, he's mean. And what else is he? A bad guy. Yes. How does he make you feel? Sad. Mm. Sad. What yeah. happened? So, what happened yesterday when you found out he was near where we were? Uh. The we had to ask up the police. Mm. Well, we had to ask them which way to walk because they were right. redirecting traffic. And what did you say? I said no. That's not what you said. She she had, I had videos here too. She was like, "I'm so angry. I'm so angry." No, I'm like no, I'm so angry. That's what you did. Why That's are we it. so angry at the president? Because he he I saw the helicopter hit. And then the other mean people were You saw the other mean people? Wow. Yeah, That's in the helicopter. Wow. In the helicopter? And he was in the helicopter driving himself. He was driving himself with his little hands, right? No, his big hands. <laughs> no, he's he got, has small hands for me. He's got small man. hands. And I have big hands. You have big hands. Isn't it amazing that, that, that we live in an age where, like, I grew up in the 70s. And I heard that the backdrop was like Watergate. Yeah. Or the backdrop was like Reaganomics. Mm -hmm. or whatever. But I never really understood. Like, I never, I never emotionally vested in what the presidency was. And we live in an age right now where our children are acutely aware Very. of what this presidency is about. What does that say to you? You know, it, it's sad. And, I mean, there, there's a long and complicated conversation to have about the last president. And, you know, not one I really want to have right now. But, you know, that oh, wow. she about was 44 also 40, you're talking about, about 44. 44 yes. And that, you know, she was able to look at this articulate. And it's insulting to call a president. It should be insulting to call a president articulate right now. You can't no, touch no, this. But, but, but you if you look at presidencies, assume, yeah, they're not all 44. articulate. Way had the gift absolutely of, of, of being articulate yeah. and, that, and that's not that the, the stereotypical that. attribute that you give to intelligent black people right it's like just he, he was to other presidents. very articulate mm. name this is not but when you compare him to I number 43 talk. right when you compare no, him to 43 no I talk cause I have the headphones on oh you got oh, the headphones goodness. on goodness right Naima you're gonna get asked to leave okay shout out to yeah. Nick Cannon yes and these headphones incredible <laughs> incredible and yeah, shout out nice. to Rode for these amazing microphones but anyway yeah so i mean yeah he he had the the oratory skills he's a good looking guy he's young he's got this beautiful family and this is somebody who appears to be honest right and and intelligent and like he's not he he barack obama wasn't on twitter at six in the morning talking about snl and bad midler right and, and the fcc or, or the tweets or, the tweets oh, the tweets are just i mean 
He's a human like egg, AB. He's like the most ridiculous he's, Twitter troll. Like, like Dave Chappelle said, he's a he is the, he is we, we elected a troll. Yes. We elected an actual troll as our president, and that's really disheartening. And so, for her now, to Naima, shame, Naima, you, 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 you don't can't want to touch that leave. microphone. You're gonna get in trouble. You can't touch that microphone. Have to pay for it and I don't have oh. enough money for that. Okay, no, it's 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 not a it's not a game, Naima. Do you want to leave? <laughs> okay. Well. Um, I used to scare my kids. Did you really? Yeah. Whenever my kids would do something that I didn't like, Mm -hmm. I'd be like, well, watch out for that man under the desk (laughs) with little teeth. (laughs) It's like, okay. But, um, watch out for my guy. (laughs) He's got little teeth. There you go. You're not scared. But yeah, we have, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And Naima. Hold on. Hold on. Like, that's not where it goes. Okay. That's not I don't know where it goes because we've unplugged <laughs> yeah. the headphones at this point, but it's fine. I can still hear you. But um, you know, and, and Naima, they have a she goes to a, a small uh African center school. Yes. Um and they have a picture they have a picture of the the pre- I want to say the 45. president and his family. Forty four and his 44, and his family right. at the door. Right. And so she sees that every day, uh and, and every night when she goes home and you know, to to go from somebody like that that makes people feel again. Excuse me. Hey, hey, hey. Naima, Naima. Do you want? Do you want us to have to go? No. Okay, Don't you go have yet, to be Naima. Okay, you, you, you have to wait. We're about to give you your. You're about to give you your exclusive. You're about to be. Yeah, you're about to get your turn to talk. Okay, you have to wait. Okay. In here. In and there. When is your turn? She is four years old, what? and she has completely. I mean, she's been on camera today. She's just what? And she worked with mommy, so she's a little tired. Okay, that's um, okay. Okay, she, she works. I want to okay, you have to go to Russia. To wish her, my coworker okay. to wish her. I want to go to Russia too, though. I worked, I worked with her. Okay, to wish it wasn't at the office today. But okay, just sorry. Like, so anyway. Okay, so yeah. Back, so it, back to your president. It's devastating. It, I mean, there's devastating. not a day where I don't feel bad about the state. Of Mom. this country, and it's not that I ever had a lot of optimism. I seven, I certainly never bought into the idea of American exceptionalism. Right. But I will say this: I fear that we are going to be welcomed into the world in ways that we haven't been. So just some of the that? some of the atrocity, like when we look at Syria, right? When we look at things that have happened across the world, where you can. You know, you you can't take for granted that your house isn't going to get bombed or that your, you know, your neighbors are going to be there the next day, that they're not going to get swept away um, or, or, you know, snatched up in the middle of the night, which we have seen happening uh, with ice. But but in mass. Right. Yeah. I I work. Okay, I I just worry that that's going to happen to us. And I'm not saying that we don't. Oh, so 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 we're welcome in kind. Huh? Across, across, we're welcome and kind across across the planet. Like, no, I think that we're going to become some of the things, some of the freedoms and and safety that we've been able to take for granted. Um, relative freedoms, right? Because we're still black, we still know that certain things can happen to us that might not happen to other Americans. But that we are going to look up and see massive bombings or a war that takes place on these shores. You know, I, I, I fear that and I, I hope I'm wrong. Mommy, but, I, have to go to the I mean, but it's also okay. about time. It's, 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 a, it's at home, so I'm here. Okay, you just gotta wait just a couple minutes. No, take okay? it in the bathroom. Take it in the bathroom. Can you pause for a yeah, second? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's okay. We gotta keep that in there. Keep this sorry in there. Jamila. Yes. Um, we live in a time where um as much as social media is distracting. It brings to the forefront some of the most brilliant minds. Mm-hmm. Who can you suggest that we start listening to and watching? Uh, well, I absolutely want you to tune in to CassiusLife.com. Um, and I'll talk a little plug. bit more like, about like that. that later. I like that. Um, <laughs> Michael Denzel Smith, Mark Lamont Hill, Mickey Kendall, um, Zahira Kelly, who you mentioned earlier. Um, oh Lord, I'm, I'm blanking on the sister's name who I want to shout out really, really badly. Um, Nicole Hannah Jones at the New York Times. Most of her reporting is around education, um, but it, that's important, right? Like, I think it's important that we we can't spend all of our time 
focused on this one person, right? The, the, and I'm not saying we should, you know, tap out. You're talking about Trump. T- talking about Trump. Like, I think that... King's president. We <laughs> have... <laughs> We have so many issues and we have small issues that we, we have to deal with that lead us to this big place, right? And I think it's important that as individuals, we try to hone in on the thing that we can impact, you know? And so it, if your ministry is not political action, but, but yours is getting people registered to vote, right? If you're maybe not an organizer who could get people at a rally, but you can write something that helps people to understand what's happening to them as a result of what's going on now, then then that's your way of contributing. You know, there's certainly enough work for us all to do. Um, and, and I think that's important. So more than just saying, you know, one person can be your compass, right? Like I think of Mark Lamont Hill, who's one of my dearest friends, is one of our most brilliant and important minds, but I also disagree with him on certain things. Um, so I can't say that he's a compass for me, right? Like, I don't think any one person can be or a set of thinkers can be your compass, but I think you should be paying attention and I think you should be looking. Uncle Mark, Uncle Mark. Um, you know, I, I think it's important to expand the types of things that you're reading mm-hmm. at this point, how often that you're reading. Mm-hmm. And listen to our children. Listen to young people. Yes. Um, you know, if nothing else, if this whole thing blows up tomorrow, I am happy to have these moments with her. And I think, you know, sometimes I, I carry Naima with me to a lot of stuff like this. She, she's been on TV sets and at photo shoots and panel discussions. And for some folks, I think the assumption is, oh, single mom can't find a babysitter. You know, one, Naima has, like, a full-time, like, dad. She's got a team. You know, like, she She's has a... She's got a full-time dad. She has She's a, a dad. Team. She has a stepmom. Like, she has a very... You know, she has two households, right? right. She, she she doesn't have a weekend dad. Um, no. She does not, right? Um, it's not 50-50, but we do a really... What? I said I was saying nice things. Okay. Okay. What? We need Why don't you a, say it in my ear? Because I'm not sure what you're Naima needs about. a podcast. Don't say that. Naima rules. Naima. Naima's rules. <laughs> I, I honestly have no idea what she's talking about. So anyway. uh, but yeah, you know, her, her parents get along incredibly well. And, and she spends... It took some time to build, right? I mean, at the point where she was here, right. it was just like, okay, you know, we broke up. I found out she, you know, I was pregnant and we, I had a very rough pregnancy for the most part, minus a few little lumps and bumps in that first six months, I'd say once she was here, we got along. Right. It went from being maybe a little bit more cut and dry and transactional to amicable, warm, right. of you know, we've done work, you know, he, he's. We've looked out for each other professionally, right, I good. should say. That's good. Um, you know, he, he's a very talented graphic designer. Um, so, again, I mean, we're good. You know, like she has a little brother. They go to the same school. You know, he, he's a sweet little kid. And I'm, I'm very happy for the family that she has. She, she's very, yes, her shout out David. to her. So let me, ask, um, let me ask you a question. Yeah. 2017, mm-hmm. why are we still discussing the issue? Especially with social media, especially with black Twitter, yes. as woke as everybody is, why are we still discussing the issue of cultural appropriation? Why are we still discussing the issue of, yes, jewels and mighty mm-hmm. Cyrus? Like, why, mm. why, why is this still a fucking issue? You know, that, that's, that's an excellent question. And it is one that we seek we to care? answer at cashislife.com. And I, <laughs> I'm not going fully shameless with the plugs, but it's I actually so our first. Do that. Okay, I, I touched the microphone. Our first issue, because we're, you know, we're doing covers, yes. and um, our May issue, the the theme is death to culture vultures, right? And so part of the reason that this site, this platform exists, is because we've looked around. I'm not naming any names, and some of these places do really good work, right? Some of them do good work and bad work, but you've got these media outlets that are owned by other people. They primarily employ other people, but they have gotten so much of their life, uh, of their accolades, uh, of their curation, curate their content, right? 
it's our lives, right? It's our art, it's our music, it's our culture, it's our way of speaking and dressing or thinking. And, you know, there are very few of us to get a couple million dollars in VC money to just start a web platform, right? right? But people are able to do that telling our stories, right? People are able to get access to a list. You want the only black journalist I'm not a journalist. Ex- Jamila, I'm exactly. not a journalist. I'm a, I'm a fan. Hey, you I'm are, a fan and I want to You preserve- are a journalist, okay. right? But to be fair, exactly. You're not you had to have that walk. You had to be combat jack. Like yes. you had to, to 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 get to this place. You had to have lived in the industry and represented people in the industry, right? You're an insider to get access to A-list black hip hop talent. Right. There are a lot of black media spaces that can't get those people to pick up the phone, right? Or when they do, yeah. the, or when they do, the expectation is that black media, black journalists are going to be almost like unpaid PR people. Don't ask about this. Don't ask about that. If I don't like what you said, we got a problem. You're not getting access to anybody do else. On the, well, you don't do what? I don't do press runs. You don't do what? Press, press runs? Press runs. I hate press yeah, runs. Yeah, because it's, you know... It, it, it's, it, insulti- it's, it's insulting to the brand. It's insulting to, to our culture. Absolutely. And, it, you know, and it's certainly insulting to the consumer. But when it comes to us, oftentimes that's all we can get. Right, so the only course. way I can get person A or person B, you know, in this magazine or, or, you know, on this website, we're doing a press run. So we also want to just vibrate and create on a higher level than I think most black media spaces have been able to do in recent years, right? Like there's, there's a quality control thing that's important. And, you know, that unapologetic thing, yes, you know, unapologetically black, we are true to that, we are that. And that's also become a very trite kind of corny phrase. What does unapologetically black mean? Is that just wearing a t-shirt? Is that having a natural hair? Is that following the right activists on Twitter? No, it's deeper than that, right? But It's your conviction. It's your conviction. To maintain your truth in maintain whatever your situation truth, your and circumstance. And, and not putting anybody's culture above and, and in front of your own. Right. We, our people, um, and, and I actually talked about this on a video for work today, I think sometimes, and, and this is as it relates to white folks in particular, we want so badly not to be oppressed, to, to be treated warmly, to be open, you know, welcome with open arms, to have a seat at their tables, that we're not willing to just give you a seat at our table. We're going to give you the big piece of chicken. Mm-hmm. We're going to let you sit at the head. And, and, the and you can be the breast, we're giving right? you the breast? The breast. No. Well, the thigh, I mean, depends on what you like. I know the dark, breast dark is the big like, one, yeah. but dark meat tastes better. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fact. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but like, you can be mediocre. You don't have to be great. But there, there's almost this idea... That we're just thankful that you want to be a rapper. We're thankful that you want to sing R and B music. Like how we're dare thankful we? Thankful that you want to write about us. That you want to write about us. That you we're want to come that you want to, us. want to campaign around us. And we will, and, and we'll just give you all the access. And what do you need? Do you want to come to the band though with me? What else can I show you? Right. And and we've seen journalism that looks like National Geographic because that's what it is. Compton. White boys. On, white boys on safari. On safari. In the hood, like in in your own country, in the same country, maybe even the same state where you live, you're on a safari. It's ridiculous. And I just, we want to reclaim our culture. We want to tell our stories in the way they deserve to be told. And that's not saying that we're only doing hip hop. We want, we got somebody on staff who hunts, right? Like you can write about hunting here. You can write about dating here. You can write about being polyamorous here. You can write about being a parent. Like we want this to be a space where lots of black stories are told, but also without the corniness that sometimes comes when you feel like you're telling a black story that doesn't get told. So we have somebody saying, I'm a black man who does yoga. He's not going to at any point in that story I say, yoga. I am a black man who I, does I did yoga. I a lot of yoga. Well, but, well it, it's a lot more common yeah. now, but it's, you know, it, it's still not something readily associated with us. But if you write that story, it's not going to be, I am the black man in the yoga class. You know, it's going to be like, yo, I've been doing yoga this many years. This is how it's changed my life, blah, blah, blah. If there's an interesting story that relates to race and or racism. And I got a therapist. And, yeah, and I got a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we just want to tell a lot of black stories and tell them well and be funny, you know, and, and, and to be able to drink. And there's something I don't want to get into smoke, yet. Some smoke, a little there's bit. Something a little that smoky smoke. Marijuana is going to be a very big part of our storytelling. Um, it, 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 rather, I should say, it's something that we're going to cover very deliberately and very seriously, and, and not just seriously it because, because it's it, important. Because yes. whatever your personal politics are around it, whether you you smoke or you don't, racial politics, the are, racial politics, the economic politics. Like we're going to watch white folks 
who who spent <laughs> decades criminalizing this to oppress people like you and I to make sure that we could you know that this little thing you might do on on the weekends to relieve the stress of racism and the white man having a foot on your neck so you that little bit of weed that you couldn't pass the piss test now you lost your good city job you lost your good job at the po- at, you know at, at the bus station or whatever and now you broke you know or you got pulled over for having a tiny little bit of weed in your car or walking down the street with a joint now you're locked up or your car is impounded you you know you're in trouble maybe you can't get a student loan lost now custody, all these things or, whatever. or maybe you're locked up Right. right, all these things that have happened to us over the years, right? We how half of your favorite rappers in the nineties, the mugshot on TV for marijuana, <laughs> of all the foolish things to to be a to be a story, right? He was arrested for marijuana possession. But yeah, all and this now, compassion right now for all these heroin. Oh yeah, addicts, like all this compassion. Oh, like I'm, I'm amazed, and right. my heart is so warm that all this compassion. Oh, so sad that America is shown for these heroin addicts. Right, where we, you were a devil if you smoked weed, and a monster if you did crack. Right. You know, in the same way we have, there's been a lot of compassion for coke users too. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's so stressed out. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, he got he's caught kid, into that but, Hollywood you know, he, yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look how think of how many. You know, a, a handful of women, but largely, stop jumping, sweetheart, largely white male young actors dead of a heroin Tor- overdose. Like tortured childhood. You know, but- torture, just, oh, his art. He just couldn't leave the character. Yeah, fuck your art. It's Sorry, just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Know, fuck or, your or, art. Fuck your torture, man. Take just it. Like, you know what? Take it's your sad. power through that. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's sad. sad that that happens to you, and it's sad when it happens to us, yeah. too. Right, like it's it's uh, there should be compassion for drug addicts, right? You should not incarcerate addicts. That's not how you cure an addiction, right? Like that's not healthy. I'm not saying it has not worked, but the difference between a middle class or upper middle class person who goes in and and you know maybe something is happening while they're behind bars and they're able to break their addiction to heroin or whatever they had an issue with and when they get out maybe they have the resources in their family and their community to say we're going to make sure you stay in treatment we're going to get you in therapy we're going to give you a job versus somebody who's poor you know and, and, and is color. incarcerated and has a different sounding color, name different you know set of circumstances different maybe part of the country how you're treated behind bars versus how we're treated mm-hmm. how much time you spend mm-hmm. behind bars um, versus how much time somebody from the suburbs is going to spend if they're incarcerated for it at all you know it, it's just disgusting so I really want us to you know figure out what do we need to do to, to challenge that right like like our last guest Jay Smooth said, we're way, be- Smooth. we're way beyond talking about race. What do we do about it? What do we do about it? What do we do about it? Last question. Yes. Who's your top five? Oh, my goodness. This is did never... We did, did we do this last Yeah, time? we did the top yeah. five last time. I want to hear it again. I wonder. I'm trying to think what I said before, but I'll say right now... You know, it's hard for me because it's just really hard to compare. Like, Everybody, just give me the top five. I know, you're like, I It's hard for me, too. And I've been around longer than I know. all you motherfuckers. It's, it's hard for it's me. It's hard. My top five. You want, me, you want to hear my top yeah, five? Well, I'd like to you hear your current Some kind of parameter, five. like top five. All right. Yeah, that, that, thank you. Thank no, you. No, no parameter. See? That makes it so much See? richer. My top five. <laughs> Kane. Jay. Mm. Biggie. KRS-One. Mm-hmm. Doom. No parameters. It's easy. I feel like that's the best to say. I don't think last time you said Doom. That's, um, Doom's, Doom's, Doom's been in my, in my, cat, man, in my top five a long time. That sounds familiar. Um, okay. <sighs> Can I do no particular order? No, just... It's no particular order. Okay. No groups, no duos. No groups, no duos. Okay. Um, stop, stop, stop. Black Thought. Mm-hmm. He's in a lot of people's top five recently. Yeah, as he should be. As yes. he, you know, give the man his flowers while he's still here to yes. receive them. Um, there's someone I want to put in there, but I'm just like, we're, I, I really kind of want to put Lupe in there in terms of skill. Lupe, just Lupe deserves it. I'm not, I'm, it. No one's judging. No one's judging. I don't right? judge anybody's top five. Okay. I know you don't. No, 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 you've heard some ridiculous ones. I've heard some, some um, no, no, but every every top five that I've heard, yeah, you has understood. Made sense. Somebody recently said Big Bank Hank, wow, from the Sugar Hill Gang, huh? And I got it. Yeah, who said that? I Who's forget, that? I forget. But somebody said Big Bang Hank, and I was like, okay. I got it. Okay, I mean Kendrick. 
Kendrick. I was of course. trying not to say Kendrick because I'm like with but, him but being Kendrick the is a fucking to, machine right now. How could you not? Huh? No, he's no, no. I was trying not to say him first. Like he's the first name that comes to but mind right now. He's the greatest like, rapper of our time right now. He absolutely yes. is. He, he, he that, that we know about. That we know. That, about. that we know about. That we know about. Um. So Kendrick. That's three. Thought. Lupe. That's three. Lupe. It's hard not to put Jay on there. I don't have the emotional attachment to Jay Z's music. That, that all of it. Like I have it to some of it, not in the way that some people are just like. I mean, oh, Brooklyn, give you my first... era, baggy jeans. Yeah. You know, iceberg. Yes. Um, I'm from that era, so. Maybe care. I mean, hmm. But say KRS. I mean, for years, I would tell you exactly who my top five was. For the longest, it was KRS and most and Quali. And common, I was very much a natural hair series. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, and those are, I mean, those, so top and favorite are, are, I guess, inextricable. So I will say. So we're still at three. Right. I'm gonna go just beyond the. I'm supposed to say who I think is just the best, and just talk about who my five Forget favorites who you are. Suppose that, right? That's not what it's that's, about. I know. I don't personal? care who I'm. I'm not okay. supposed to say Doom. Right. Yes. So you're right. Common, Kendrick, Thought. I'm stuck. So let it, let it go. Just let it, let's trust your instinct. I'm kind of I hung up and I kind of have most and quality of the same kind of tier right. to me. Um, I'm not mad I at that though. Most has just been he's got a resume gap of yes. this world, he's, right? He's absent. Like, and he's I, and I absent. Do, so like, most gonna, is supposed to be in my top five. Most is absolutely Mo, like so, the two that's supposed to be in my top five, but they're absent. Mm-hmm. Is most. And electronica, they're supposed and I was thinking to. That I was they're supposed gonna, to be, but they, they're like, errant. You, you, like, can't, you, pass, you can't You can't pass an A student if he doesn't come to class. That's true. That's we had uh, true. Michael Smith and Jamil Hill here. Uh, that was the argument. Mm-hmm. They wanted them wanted to have like, Talib and Mos, and right. like that's why can't that's have, why I can't give can't. it to Andre. Andre is still Andre. Should, Andre's uh-huh. amazing, but to me, mm. he's still an absent student. He's an absent student. That's so unfair. I mean, okay, so we're going to go back. Three. Common, <laughs> Kendrick, Thought. Mm-hmm. Quali. Quali. Yeah. He's consistent, you consistent. know? I mean, he, he continuously delivers and... Okay. Um... Top five, top five, top five, top five. Yeah, this is really tough. Cause I'm thinking Jean Grey is one of my favorites. Mm. Um, hmm. I know I'm probably saying I know everybody struggles with this, but I feel like I'm just like, am I forgetting somebody that I'm not? Okay. Q-tip is one of my absolute favorites. There you go. That's your top five. That there you go. There you go. So that's it. Jamila. Yeah. Cashless Life. Cashlesslife.com. Tell us more about Cashless Life. Where can we yeah. find it? Are, so, you, are you guys on social media? Yes, cashlesslife.com. It's with two at- S's, internets. I just found out tonight. It's with two S's. Yes, Cashless, like Cashless Play. Um, at Cashless Life underscore on Twitter, um, Facebook page, Cashless Life, Instagram, Cashless Life. Um, you know, if you want a space, Cashless Life, Cashless is for everyone, right? Mm-hmm. Like, this is not just a site for black people. This is really a site for everyone. But, yes, these are mostly black people telling these stories and, and picking up a camera and documenting our lives. And I think that if you really care about you can't just, you can't extract the culture from the people, right? right? A lot of folks do that, which is how you end up with a yes jewel situation right. or, you know, Miley Cyrus saying, I had basically, I had my fun with hip hop when I'm it served done with me you niggas. and I'm done. I'm like so a college white this girl. Anymore. Like, I'm now I'm in the real world. I mean, I'm not dating none of y'all. Darkies. Listen, I'm going straight full white girl. I mean, this is what you do. Like, you're yeah, young, that's what you I'm do. playing around. Exactly. And when I'm older, I'm going to settle and I'm down. I'm surprised that people are surprised at this whole Miley, Miley thing. Oh, like, that's like, what that, they that's do. That's how it happens. They play around. That's trajectory. They play around with y'all for a second. And when it's time to settle down and have some kids and have a real life, they go find him a nice white boy. And that's in a literal or metaphorical sense. And they don't know their body count. And they don't know. Brad don't know that dark body count. They don't care. They might want to know how many black men. I feel like like some of those guys (laughs) ask those questions. That's just me theorizing because I know people think because I'm a feminist, I'm an expert on white men. But I really am not. (laughs) But um, but yes, so cashlesslife.com, I I think it's going to be a really... Exciting. I think you I have an, a, a brilliant idea. Okay. You guys need to do a piece on like the royalty of podcasting. Uh, we you guys, are so far ahead of you. Um, I will give you a little bit more download on that. 
at, you know, cameras off, but I'll just, or, or uh, we need, y'all, y'all need, I don't care. I mean, but just we, know that, we, don't, yeah. we, don't, we don't need to be in there, but y'all need to do that. Start. We are absolutely doing that. And do you know whose idea that was? Who's, Karen Amayo. Okay. Cause she was the damn what? visionary. We had a long, this was way before we had wireframes. She was like, okay, we're going to cover podcasts. Yes. So I'll give you a little bit more intel on, well, on how that's going to play I'll, out. I'll, I'll help you. Side who you know absolutely we need you we have a studio we need you to come in and be on camera okay. y'all come through and we have sure. the combat jack and, 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 squad yeah, in the and, office and can you and... can tell us who your top five podcasters are mm. Mm. <laughs> i'm trending that day <laughs> <laughs> you hurting feelings no 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 hurt feelings no 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 just brutally honest yeah. unapologetic oh mm-hmm. my god this whiskey i'm, I'm slurring I yo wanna, that I, whiskey is it's gas you haven't had monkey shoulder i didn't even drink most of my why is it called yeah, monkey shoulder? That's it's the name. I don't know. Why is it called bullet? Why is it called <laughs> Jameson? <laughs> Yo. Why is it called Johnny Walker Red? I don't know, man. It's just <laughs> shoulder monkey shoulder, monkey is, shoulder is my favorite whiskey right now. It's not an endorsement. Jamila. I want to actually, I want to turn. I know you're wrapping it up, yeah, but I, I have a question, question I want to ask yes, you. Uh, and I want to interview you on okay. camera at length. So just know. I got to interview. I, I'm ready for it. I interviewed I Mary love, J. Blige last week. Yes. Really, how was on that? Facebook Live. It was awesome. No, no. I feel that I have been blessed. Was there any by... toxicity in that? Toxicity? Because of what she's going through with Ken doing. She is, her hurt was palpable. Yeah. But I wouldn't say it was toxic, right? And it was I just. Hurt. There are people who's hurt. You know, it, it 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 rubs you the wrong way, right? I wanted to take her burdens from her. Mm, you know, yes. I, I felt that, right? I'm in the presence of this wealthy, beautiful, immensely talented, globally storied. You know, recognized storied I did songs woman. with Mary J. Right. Blige, my niggas. I mean, that's 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 a thing. Yes, you know. Um, and and I saw her hurt. Um, but she was funny and sweet and pleasant. And you know, she it, it's incredible. One that she's had, you know, she's been around going on 25 years, right? You know, 26 if you count uh, the, I can't, what was the first soundtrack song before? Who's the man? Who, right. Before, um, what's the 401 came, actually came out. But like, that she's been able to channel her experiences and her heartbreaks, you know, and her joys in ways that help other people, you know, other women in particular, like go through a breakup or, or through something that that's devastating. And, you know, that she, she's kind of, I, I don't want her to be so much a vessel for our pain that she takes it on. And so it's hard to watch her going through her own very public mess. But I, you know, I, but that happens sometimes. I mean, that happens, happens in our community. And, and her, have you heard the album yet? I have not. I have to say her album is phenomenal. Really? Like I really, it's very upbeat. You know, um, I have a good friend who she's, in a, dance, she's in a dancery right now. She's in the so she's not quite in the dancery, but she's <laughs> it's you can bop to it. You right. know, like she's talking about these things that she's going through and you don't feel sad. It's not like listening to because I'm going Mary's down. our favorite aunt right now. <laughs> she, huh? How does she go from like our favorite round the way girl mm-hmm. to our favorite auntie? Cause y'all are old. <laughs> dancing with lightsabers. Did you see that? Did you see that thing with her dancing with the that lightsabers? That was funny. Yeah, I mean, I wish I did. I wanted to ask her about that. My favorite is her dancing. Somebody took a, like made a montage of Mary dancing clips and put it with cranes in the sky. I think. I didn't see. It that. was so cool. Like, and it was perfectly timed. Did you see that? No, I didn't it was see really. It. And the cranes in the sky video had just came out, and it was perfect. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think for those of you all who are in her peer group, you know, she, she's around the way girl. And I think for those of us that are slightly younger, I mean, Mary, yeah, she would be, she she's younger than most of my aunts. But I have an aunt who's very close in age to her who always reminded me of her. So, yeah, she she's always been the favorite. The young, cool auntie, right? right. Like the auntie that'll like, you know, let you take a sip of her drink or buy you some lipstick when your mom yeah, says, no, yeah, she's yeah. that aunt. Um, Last question. Yes. In 2017. Mm-hmm. What's your secret ratchet pleasure? My secret Good question. Ratchet, huh? I said that's a great question. My secret <laughs> ratchet pleasure. I mean, I don't really think of anything that I'm doing as being a secret. Like, I just don't think I. But that you're listening to or you're reading. I, or you're watching. Reading. I mean, I, I haven't missed a season of love and hip hop since it came that, out. That's, so. that's, that's. God damn ratchet right there. That's, that's pretty damn that's, ratchet. That's, that's, that's top tier ratchet. You know? That's, uh, that's, that's, like, that's, like, that's, like, that's like that's the gold standard in terms of that, ratchet. Yeah. 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 Um, 
And I had to be careful because the little one asked to watch yeah. it the other day. And Peter I was Guns, like, what? What's up, Peter Guns? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> she keeps shooting. He, Peter Guns don't shoot no blanks. Oh. Don't shoot. Uh, <laughs> Fully loaded. Oh. Fully loaded. <laughs> but, but is that even a secret? I'm like, at this one, I thought we all watched reality. Like, Does uh, everybody yeah. watch some reality yeah, show? Huh? I, I have not watched a season no? of Love. I'm just too my, busy. One of my favorites is uh, Black the Black Ink Crew joint. Uh, I like Black Ink yeah. Crew, okay. too. I yes. watch that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think of it. Kodak is. Black. You fucking with Kodak Black? Uh, that'll be a no. <laughs> I, I mean, I did not. I feel like I'm. T- it's not fair because I feel like in my age, you all were still able to. You were yes. still able to listen to what was on the radio. I'm not saying that you were like, oh, this is you know, man, this is just as good as when we were in the tunnel. But it wasn't like, <laughs> the hell is this? I mean, I don't it's, know it's how your whole, reaction. I mean, they, I, I, <sighs> I've, I because I have teenage sons. Yes, I've I've um reconciled that. I can appreciate things that were not made for me. Yeah. This, so a lot of this music was not made for me. And I, yes. And I will say there are times where I'm like, you know what? I, I see the value in this. I respect that. I affirm and I just don't like it. Like, that's how I feel about Adele. I can't say I feel that way about, like, I don't like Adele's music. I think she's very talented. Mm-hmm. So I can appreciate that. Or she's- Sam Smith today being, did you, did you read that? What happened? I read something somewhere. Somebody said, I don't know if it was a fake site, but they said Sam Smith is the most important artists in black music today i'm not surprised somebody was, and saying I was that. like these nuts i can't say i so i feel differently about <laughs> these him nuts. he sounds he's almost sounds like mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's that's literally <laughs> that's exactly who every <laughs> that's what sam smith sounds like to me so no i don't feel the you know i don't want to say I, it's not for my, me to say he can't sing but i don't like his voice i wouldn't say he's the most important yeah, I wouldn't well, say he's the most music. important. And it said black. Anything. Music, in, like any, black, black music. I need to see nuts, some. Black nuts. That's sad. Yeah. I wouldn't even say he makes black music. Like, I, okay. But, yeah, um, yeah. but now, like, the, the mumble rap thing. I feel bad. I don't want to be that person, right? Like, again, there's Migos, two songs though, where... Migos, though. Migos is a natural, national some, treasure. Yeah, I mean, they got some fucking band rap. Migos, Migos yeah. is a national treasure. Yes. Yeah, no, I mean, they're, they're, they, their skills there. Yes. Like, I'm not saying I like everything they're talking about or, you know. like I'm up and down. Drake is hit or miss for me. You know, when he point, hits, he hits. After, when he after misses, all these hits, after 10 years of hits? No, Drake is an incredibly talented rapper. Like, I will never take that again. Like, I'm saying there's just things he makes that I really, really like. When I like him, I like him. When I don't like him, I'm like, mm, I don't really like singing Drake. Like, I never needed him. And Marvin's I know that's like, Room? No, Marvin's Room was... That's Grammy worthy. Marvin's Room was a good song, yeah. you know. But I mean, I think some of the... I'm trying to think of what's the I don't know one of those. Fuck that nigga. Yeah, no, that was that was so bad. There's a song like, in every particular dude um, can relate to that, right? Yeah. Women are so surprised that women can, that men can relate to that record. I'm not. It's totally selfish, and you know, I, how dare you be happy with somebody just so how I, dare since you? Since I ain't treat you well, now you're just gonna find somebody else that treats but you I'm well. But I'm calling you at <laughs> four in the morning. And he's not there. Yeah, so no, that's, can, do I got a shot? That no, it was a, I related to <laughs> being on the like yeah, something like that. That's what y'all do. Yeah, you know the easy happy do. thing basically. Shout but, out to uh, Drake, man. Yeah, no, he Drake makes great music. I like to see. I'm not necessarily into some of the influences that he's trying on. I don't think he's you know I don't see him as a culture vulture in the way that some people do. And again, if I were you know I'm not a dance hall artist, right? I'm not Jamaican, so if that were my culture, my maybe I'd feel. I don't think he's a culture vulture. Yeah, like I, I think I don't he's a culture career. Curator, culture uh, yeah, it, uh, curator. Him experimenting with like Afrobeat and, yeah. and, and and a lot of the UK stuff. Yeah. If he wasn't doing it, no one would, right? Yeah. So he's kind of like like you said, a curator. He's bringing this energy into mm-hmm. our forefront. Like, all right, yeah. I, I still think, I still think the hottest line on on um that last album is uh, gigs. Mm. With the Batman. Uh-huh. Dun, dun, dun. Like, people hate that lyric. Yeah. <laughs> but I love that because it reminds me of the Batman from the 60s. But, you know, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Jamila Lemieux. Thank you Thank for you having so me. Much. Thank the you return. for coming. The return. Return. And come back on and on and on. Thank and tell you. Kenna I said, what's up? Absolutely. We, she got to come by next. Yes, we please. literally are right down the street. And we need, so. you know what? It's been a while. Like, we've had a dearth with regard to uh, women women guests yeah and I hate when we when I feel like I'm in a rut I know you were doing so in fact that's how I got on the first I think that's how we were introduced yes. you were asking for women a few yes. people threw my name out there please give me some suggestions afterwards please absolutely because I need more women on the show yes like, like when I see women there's a whole different energy yeah with regard to listenership with regard to numbers I, I just love it and I will say this I think that when you are able to have a dialogue with somebody like myself Men that want to, I mean. I got some men haters on my team. 
I know. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm part. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I don't subscribe to. Yeah. But by de facto, the Combat Jack show is a member of the. Was it the the, the was it the 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 female women? Was it the the, the little rascals? The, was oh, that? the he man yeah. hunt woman hater stuff. Hate, like I don't. I'm not part of that. Jerk rascal. Like, that's part of our. Here. It's That's part of your part of world. Yeah, it's my world. I will so say when I, this. So when I have somebody like a feminista Jones, I'm like, yeah. combat. I, I'm so disappointed. I'm like, what? What, what the fuck are you talking about? Disappointed? Yeah. It's uh, Yeah, no. And I will say, I saw a couple of those comments yeah. when I was on before, but I will say this. I was really happy with the feedback that I got from dudes that were like, I didn't fuck with you. I don't like, I ain't like you prior to about. this. Or they were like, I just don't like feminine. Like, I wasn't, you know, it wasn't personal. I, I didn't know anything about you, but you said some things that made me think. So I hope, um, I don't know, I feel like we were a little bit more all over the place this time. Um, I mean, you know, whiskey will do whiskey. that, but it's okay. But, um, but yeah, so that, that, so that you use this platform to help people at least get proper exposure, right? Because yes. if you're only experience, if you're only encountering feminism in a retweet, right in the middle, some tragic thing has happened. Right, something bad has happened in the world, and and the men are arguing this, women are arguing that. That's the only time that you're encountering feminism. It's so divisive <sighs> right now. It like, I've never be. seen a period where black men and black women are so divided. I, I, I really, I'll say is that. Is that real? Is that real, or is I, it just I struggle with in this, that, in this weird of, we, fake digital world? I think, I think that the fake digital, the fake digital world is a mirror to some of the issues that are happening mm-hmm. in, in the real I mean obviously like if we're arguing because a man has killed a woman or because a woman is involved in you know some sort of instance of lying about a guy or you know it's a child support like these things really do happen yes, right yes, yes, yes. so I don't think that I don't know that the divide is pro, as profound in real life but I will say that there are a lot of people in our communities that are hurting yes. because of our inability to really love and support each other in the yeah, way that we need to people. and that's my belief like that for me feminism is not like it's not about getting what men have or having power over somebody or revenge right? or whatever it, you're yeah, going through it, it, it's this idea that we Whole, I, I believe black women, we hold the other half of the key to our liberation. I mean, I right? think black women are the key, so I mean, that's my, I mean, and we just they're just starting to like look at Maxine Waters, right? Yes. Like, look at somebody I need, I need, who do you have a, you have a contact on her. I do, I need her on the show. I, you absolutely should. I will not on drink show. on that show. You should absolutely get I want on her on that show. I, um, yes, we want to bring her to New York anyway, so we can work this out. She can yes. make two stops, we're right down straight That'd from each great. other, but. I mean, just her leadership and her bravery when other is members it bravery of bravery when it's just to me common it's sen- common and sense. And the thing is, it it sh- but, but it's common sense. But she ain't the only Democratic uh, Congressperson or, or or Senator. Like, why do we so infrequently hear from these other people? Why are so called allies? Because it's cowardice hmm? in the face. Of, it's cowardice in the face it's of common cowardice, sense, right? So she she's not doing anything beyond the pale. She's just being honest. She's a truth teller. Right. And, and you don't often see that. And I just think it's the kind of fearless leadership that black women demonstrate over and over again. And again, I'm not saying that black men don't. You absolutely do. But there is something to be said for the ways that black women put our bodies, our careers, our lives on the line everything. for everyone. Yes. Right. Or for our families or for our men. And, and that we don't. We, we're just not in a place where we demand that of our men. And I, I think it, it's for everyone. It's like we need everybody to be, you know, mount up. We, we need each other. Yes. Everyone be accountable. Everybody be truthful. Everybody be good, you know. And if we're in a place where a woman can talk about a very valid statistic around something that harms women and be cast as a man hater. If you if you're talking about that's a, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. That, you that, know? That, that's 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 a disease to me. It, yeah, I mean, if if we're saying if I'm like, well, I went on a date last night. This guy is really nice, and you're like, man, fuck men. Why are no. you still going out, with men? That's patriarchy. You're stupid. You know, like that's a man hater, right? And that's also very very rare. Yeah. And it's easy, I think, in in the world of social media, for somebody you can take if you have a hundred very. And I don't want to say, like, we have to be logical or we have to be reasonable. We have a right to be enraged 
about this shit that's of happening. Of course. But if you take, for, for lack of a better term, you find these people are saying very clearly, hey, this is what women want. You know, we don't want to be chased home from the train station. We don't want to hear your baby yo. You got some sexy lips while we're trying to walk home. We want to be treated with a certain amount of respect. We don't want you rejecting us based on body count or acting like our, you know, quote unquote body count has to be so much lower than yours. And you go for the woman that's saying the most, the, the wildest, most outlandish thing. And you hone in on her and only her. And maybe her message is either inaccurate or maybe it's true and it's just very, you know, it, abrasive. it's abrasive. Right. And that then becomes the entirety uh, of women who advocate for gender. That's it. You know, and they're all ridiculous. And, and I see people take not somebody who, like Zahira says, uh, bad Dominicana. She's very, her, her language is very blunt. She's very yes. plain. You know, she's not sugarcoating anything. It's very inclusive anything. with regard to absolutely. her indictments. Absolutely. But I, don't, I can't take I it personally. Absolutely not. But I don't see people say, like, they. she's smart. And the way she crafts things makes sense. So you can't really, it's hard to single her out. But they'll take somebody who's maybe really young and perhaps very new to feminism and, and new to this way of thinking and you go through that moment where you're you're feeling this kind of first sense of being validated or liberated because there's a good chance that somewhere in you you had these feelings you didn't know why the men on the corner felt like it was okay for them to flirt with you when you were 12 or 14 but it bothered you you didn't know why your friend who got assaulted you know by a guy was asked what she was doing you know why was she there you didn't understand why the teacher maybe investing more time in trying to help the boy next to you who was struggling with math as opposed to helping you who was also struggling because the idea was that he really needed somebody to do that right now and and you're popping off and you're angry and maybe you're saying things that are that are a little bit nonsensical or just slightly off base or just, your messaging is just not good somebody takes that and says this is what feminism is feminism is trash it's weak sauce it, it's weak sauce it's low hand you know yeah. they're, they're just looking for an out don't do that they're looking for an out internet stop that Jamila Lemieux thank, thank you thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you whiskey whiskey shout out to Naima Naima for, you gotta say good night the first four the first four year old yeah, on so the Combat cute. Jack show <laughs> Combat <laughs> Jack show loves the children can you say good night can you say good night that's okay. She's, she's, she's tired. She's on strike. King, what up, man? That whiskey boy. <laughs> nah, another good episode, man. Thank you. Mogul. Mogul. Combat Jack Show. Listen, niggas, don't be afraid of Spotify. <laughs> Get on it. Um, May Internet's. 19th. It's that so you know what it is. Dream those dreams and then man up, woman up and live those dreams. Because life without dreams is black and white and the universe flows in technicolor. It's around sound. Thank you, Jamila. Thank you. Thank you, Naima. Say thank you. That's okay. She don't got to. We're, we're done. Goodbye. We're done. Hey, you being rude. Ooh. You tired? She's tired. No. No. <laughs> no. I just want to throw you on my shoulder. Oh, now you want to say? I remember start? my kids are your size. I'm going to throw them on my shoulder and spin you all around. Probably no. a good 30 pounds. She's, She's 38 30, pounds. 38 pounds. 38 pounds. Yesterday. 38 pounds and almost 40 inches tall. Tim's on. Tim's on. We didn't touch on this kid either. I want to huh? touch on the, um, the Roy Oliver, John, Jordan Edwards thing. That's a, I mean, it's, what, what do we touch on? <laughs> hmm? What do we touch on? It's the same thing over and over and over. Again. I know. That's, yeah. You got a 15-year-old. Yeah. That's right, kid. It's like a 3.5 speed. He's an athlete. What do we touch on at this point? You know what? The one thought I had, and I wrote about it, so I think maybe that's why he. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. I just. I, I see you tweet. Like you that. tweeting about it. That's. Huh? that's I like that. We're almost done. Which is. I'm so clear. The You're only. The, the only. Now, name is my only child. I don't see myself having another child for maybe four or five years. Right. So maybe if I had another child, if I had multiple children, I could. I may answer this differently. Okay, are we, but are we well, on but, now? Yes, we're on. But with one child, and this whole thing with this consistent if you, agenda. If, if, if somebody killed Naima, I'm going to go. I'm going to do everything in my power to kill them. You would I, not be the traditional, I forgive you, black family. Absolutely not. 
Absolutely. I could not forgive anybody that I just, ever killed any blood of mine from fucking mom, dad, mm, to my kid, to the, my kids. On, on double A, on, on to the, my kids. On the song I Triple X. you. I will do with salt. I, I will destroy your life in for any for the rest of your whole Absolutely. lineage's existence. I mean, I and don't it's, understand that. And it's Fact. just, and I. <sighs> Believe, I don't like, understand I, this whole forgiveness so thing. So I will say that, and I've really, it's, I've struggled with this many times over the years. And I have had, I forgive the actual victims' families for however they choose to grieve. Because at the end of the day, I haven't been in that position. I, I pray that I never am. And I know I'm also, I'm not a Christian, right? So I understand it. If, if that's your... I'm not a Christian, so I don't understand it. I acknowledge it. But but I understand that if that's your way of believing that you are, you know, that the best thing you can do for yourself is to forgive another human being. I struggle with that. I do. You know, it it, it devastated me. I'll never forget seeing relatives of the people who were killed in Charleston forgive Dylan Roof. They offer forgiveness to somebody who didn't ask for it. This was like a day after he'd been apprehended. No, no, No kind of even imagine comprehend him appreciating no that they, forgiveness these like you don't deserve been, this forgiveness they hadn't been funeralized yet right but i but but yeah. something that i, I it was automatic I sh- right it's automatic automatic like i just forgive you because i forgive you right like it's one thing to say and you hear these stories of people spending years visiting a a we can talk about that but you have to wait okay people visiting the the jail to see the person who killed or harmed their loved one and, and going through this forgiveness journey and the person apologize that's one thing and i'm not saying that would be me but at least it's like okay shh, 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 shh. you have to wait a second you have to wait a second but that these people would you know again if, if go you, there first yeah you know that we start there i just have had to tell that's myself a stereotype. it's a I, rodney king can we all just get uh, along? Fuck no. Well, no. you know what? Did you watch the LA 92 not, documentary? Not it was really good. Yeah, and I will good. say, and I remember, and again, I was, I was pretty young in 92. I remember how disgusted my mother was, how disgusted my father was. I remember him being made fun of and living uh, color. Huh, Rodney King, when he That's, said, I, I, I Rodney being disgusted along? Rodney, specifically. I, now, when I watched that documentary, I'd be interested to hear how you felt um, yeah. since you watched it. I felt pity for him because one, he was still healing, and we don't know who Rodney was before. You know, God rest his soul. We don't know who he was. The center of a lot of pain. He was still physical pain, harassment. I'm certain, you know. So I don't know who he was before that beating, but that kind of beat. I don't. I mean, the way he spoke, it's just like traumatic. And then also, you're watching the city burn down. How many Behind people? Name. Yeah, dozens of people killed, and there were people that were just killed because, like, weak man, boom. Virginal you know, Dennis, it, the, guy, the guy that got his his head bashed. Yeah, in. you know, and and he luckily he didn't die, but there were a lot of people who did. Um, you know, mostly black and, and Latino, but plenty, you know, plenty of other folks. An eighteen year old Korean. I sat and I read about every death while I was watching the documentary. It was like a an eighteen year old Korean boy killed by another Korean person who was just fire, you know, trying to protect their store from looters. It, so I, 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 I no longer see those words as him actually saying, "Why can't we just all be yeah. nice to each other?" This was just somebody who, yeah, you know. Um, but but when I look at so when I look at these police violence victims families mm. i just had to believe that the forgiveness to be fair have we haven't heard jordan edwards parents say anything about forgiveness you know um they they call for no acts of retribution against the police department but um i'd like to believe that 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 forgiveness thing is what they need to have some sort of peace in their lives closure and moving and closure forward. and just not feeling stuck I'm in a place of anger okay I'm Okay, like them not being stuck in the place of anger. And so if that helps them, then that's how I process that. And again, you know, I, I struggle with the idea that I, as somebody who has not lost a relative or a loved one to police violence, get to decide how somebody who actually has processes it. I will say in general, I think the rest of us, we should have a responsibility never to forget. No. Right? Mm. We let us be the ones that have the rage. We're the most forgiving. And that's that's what they take granted for. Absolutely. We're the most forgiving people. We are so, we forgive everything. We We forgive people. We forgave slavery. Ain't nobody Hmm. asked for our forgiveness. Nigga. Hmm. We haven't. And then they, we forgive. Hmm. We forgive things that, and, and people have not asked for our forgiveness and told us to get over it. 
Nigger. So no, you can't. You can't have my forgiveness. You I'm sorry. Can't forgive take these a, nuts. a street. You can't take a seat for me on the subway or no. step on my timbs. You know what's or... crazy? It's fucked up when I'm on a train mm-hmm. and I see an elderly white person come on, and I'm like, and they need a seat. Sometimes I'm like, I know you was right. I know I you might racist. Not give you a seat <laughs> because I don't know where you were 30, 40, I, 50 years I, ago. You know what I want to ask I, both I of you? Give elderly like, people how do you, my seat. Like, uh. You, you have very strong uh, views and 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 a position on 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 race in 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 America and whatnot. But how do you deal with like knowing that you know some of your peers, the white peers uh, that you have to deal with, that you know they may form an opinion about you that may hinder opportunity. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that means. Do, do you even? Does this doesn't matter. Do you do do you factor any of that in and try to just like wing it, and then to the point where you don't need them? Like how do how do how do you? Cash is love. Cash is love. Unapologetically. Black. I don't Fact apologize. Yeah. For my blackness, I, I've done enough to let everyone that listens to the Combat Jack show know where I come from. I don't come from a place of malice. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you fuck with me, you embrace that the fact that I'm unapologetically black yeah i mean i you're it's, abs- no, it's no apology there's no apologies no apology. and you it's fuck absolutely me and you right don't. it's 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 that's it you know you, you fuck me you don't and you respect my struggle or you don't right because again like it, it also for me a place of no malice i don't hate white people um i don't feel Some, like i ever have to I say do. that sometimes i do sometimes i do like I, <laughs> we have every if, there, have if there's a black person in this country who hasn't gone home and just been like i it's hate not white, white people, people as much as whiteness it's white supreme it's 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 all from white supremacy, but sometimes whiteness feels choking. You know, like you're on the G train that they used to be the blackish train, and ain't no white folks getting or on the here L or, or the to a J certain or stop. The or, M right, all of them. Or the G and, and, or the A. And you look around, and they're just everywhere, and they're just comfortable. And how did the L train become the most oh luxurious? My I mean, train they tell you what time is coming. It was the most murderous. And so it's hard. It's not the to most have... privileged train line, the L line. That's the gen- most, most gentrified uh, line. And... Privileged. I'm like y'all. Cra- like and they y'all looking at me like I'm a coming. fucking. They got the sign idiot. up that says you're the outsider. Coming. We're the outsiders, right? Yeah. The, just the number of times that I've been walking around dressed as I am now, you know, or maybe a little bit more up, or a little bit, you know, dressed a little bit uh, more down, and had a white woman clutch her purse, and I'm like, I make more than you. Or, or people know who, there's people who know who I am, right? Even if it's 10 of them, no, nobody know who you are. There's nobody who's going to pick up something that you've written and read it. And when you go back to Idaho or wherever you came from, because you're on vacation in New York, I actually live here. I have to make it, I've you're survived safari, in this place, you're right? You're on safari in New York and you came to a neighborhood or area. It's not even just when it happens in, you know, over on Fifth <laughs> Avenue or something, but you're in Brooklyn, right? You're in this space where, that, that I occupy. In a black, in a formerly black neighborhood, and I'm a threat to and you. you assume. And I'm right. And if I'm a but, threat but to you, my like, God, like how you said, react? We make more than you. Mm. <laughs> that you know, I mean, we make yes. more than you. So we, what we the fuck to. are you talking about? Success is, is you know, may, it, it's crazy. It, like, it, like, it, like, like, like on my on on the block where my house is, where my kids live. Yeah. Like two doors down, they're building this like men's shelter which is like this big thing yeah. in our community right now. But like the first white family that moved on the block came to me. It's like, do you hear about this shit? I'm like, yeah, I heard about it. And it's like, it's going to affect our property value. And I was so offended because I was like, fuck your property value. I have kids. Yeah. Fuck your property value. It's my kids safety. You don't they, care about it, your was, kids? it was their property value that was tantamount to their concerns. I was Absolutely. like, fuck you, because I don't understand that. They've already. Like my prop, I own property, so I don't understand property value. I understand the safety of my kids. Fuck you. They don't, I mean, they already, different, they've made their whole, peace with the fact that you and your kids lower their property value. It's a whole as far different as value system. I, 
yeah, and I don't have as much money as Reggie, so I don't have a house. I but, don't have that much money. I just, <laughs> you know, but but the game longer. I guess, and and I will say this: like I know that there are opportunities that I've lost out on for being political. So it's not even just about you know it being a white people thing, but just you know you're radical, you're outspoken. You know, some, there there have been some opportunities I know for a fact they were like, yeah, they were really interested in you, and then they saw what you were about. Mm. You know, it's unfortunate, um, especially considering that other people get a space to be radical, to be un- unapologetic. No, I'm pa- right? I'm unapologetically white, which is the norm. Yeah, you know they're they're the default, and and look, we we elected the most unapologetically white politician of all time. Is he the most and... unapologetically white, or the most unapolo- unapologetically ignorant white both. man? I mean both, and I think that he, his... got a, he got a gang with him. That's the other problem. That's the other problem. And yeah, whiteness allows you to be man. ignorant, it's right? Like we president. can't afford to be when well, we're fuck ignorant. Your <laughs> You know, more often than not, when we're ignorant, unless somebody thinks we're good at maybe playing, you know, a sport or rapping, we and, and they suffer, too. Right. Because like you're ignorant. You don't know what kind of deal you sign. You don't you know know what to do with your money. So you're you're in the NFL. And you got an average of what is it? One point five. What is it? Three years in the league is the, yeah. av- is the average. So you don't know that you weren't supposed to spend your advance because you were supposed to be saving your money in case you got injured in your second season, which you did. And so now you're back on the block that. Yes. If you're if you're. Ignorant in those situations, you can absolutely lose it all. But in general, if you're black and ignorant, you don't get too far, mm-hmm. right? You yeah. don't get opportunities. Like you, if you, even if you're from generation and, and generational wealth in a black community versus generational wealth in a white community are very different things, right? If you're talking about my family was on the Mayflower versus my grandfather, you know, my great grandfather went to college and my grandfather was a lawyer. Totally different types of Spady. having money. You know, <laughs> yeah, and so um, we just don't have the luxury of, of being as ill, uninformed a, a, as Cavalier. other folks are, and it it's painful. Irresponsible, huh? unaccountable. Yeah, we you know not accountable to anyone, and and able to wreak havoc on other people's lives, and just the idea that what you what you want you can have. So Brooklyn, that's nice. So Chicago, South Shore, right by the water. What you know? Wow, pre war buildings and high ceilings and i can walk to the lake and well that'll be nice well let's just go ahead and have it you know um fuck whoever was here before white people have to make peace with the fact and i'm talking to well-intentioned you know i have black friends i swear i'm not racist white folks you just have to make peace with the fact that we have a lot of legitimate rage toward your people and that you could be married to a white person you could have all white co-workers and friends and homies and love them with your whole heart and somewhere in you, there's this thing that you just understand about the world and, and who gets what and that is wrong. And so it's hard not to be angry at white people. And Embrace how your is, rage. Embrace that rage. Embrace the rage. It's a real rage. I'm all about the rage. And it's so, a real rage. Yeah. And, and, and white people, embrace that rage against you also. Embrace, embrace it. that rage against you. Take up accountability for that. Absolutely. And change that shit in be your own personal white, life. Be better white folks. Yeah. Right? Like, like take... Be better white folks. Don't you don't be mad at us for being mad at something that y'all do to us. Be mad at, at the people in your family or maybe yourself that keep it going. Hey, yo, internets, do not forget this week's episode of the Combat Jack Show is brought to you by the new Spotify original podcast, Mogul, The Life and Death of Chris Lighty. Mogul details one of the most illustrious careers in hip hop and Chris Lighty's rise to the pinnacle of music success before an untimely death. This story is broader than just music. It's the story of the American dream. Mogul, The Life and Death of Chris Lighty is a Spotify original podcast produced by Gimlet Media and the Loudspeakers Network. Follow and listen to Mogul, The Life and Death of Chris Lighty every week on Spotify. Niggas, don't be afraid of Spotify. Download that shit. This shit is for free. I'm out.